This program is brought to you by Cable Franchise Vs and generous donations from viewers like you. All right, seeing as we have a quorum of the town of Amherst Town Council present, I will call the meeting to order. And uh, we are going to review the agenda. And also, um, during the agenda, I would like to recognize some of our special guests who I, I think are just here to observe, but you may decide you want to make public comment. So uh, first of all, uh, a couple of announcements. Um, the, on February 20, um, fifth, the Finance Committee is posted as a committee of the whole for the purpose of hearing the annual audit report of the town, and the auditors will be present for that. Um, I did let the council know this, and um, please let us know if you're coming. On March 9th, 2020, at 6.30 p.m., there will be a hearing in this room. It has been posted and it is for the towns, to, it is to uh, hear the town's proposed changes to parking on Lincoln Avenue. Um, third item, and this will be part of our discussion later, uh, the results of this, Eric Nakajima has tendered his resignation from the Amherst School Committee, effective March 1st, 2020. The council will be discussing uh, the proposed process for selecting his replacement later in the agenda this evening. The school committee will have a similar discussion on Wednesday at that regular meeting. An announcement regarding the vacancy will be published on or about March 2nd, 2020. There is a fairly prescribed process in the town charter, so it's not like we're making the whole thing up. Um, I'd like to call your attention to the published vacancies on various committees, and especially the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, interested parties must fill in the CAF in accordance with the deadlines stated on the town website. Um, regarding tonight's agenda, which is up here in the order in which we will be taking the items, um, as we continue to look for sh ways to shorten our meetings, Tonight we are, um, we will ask that we suspend rules of procedure 8.4 for two items, 7D and 7G, and we did that last time, so this is not a new process. Um, in addition to this, that however, we will have a consent agenda item, and the consent agenda item will be for uh, town manager committee appointments and minutes, unless someone decides there's an item they would like to discuss, and we will take that off the consent agenda at the time, okay? A consent agenda contains routine and typically non-controversial issues which do not need further discussion and may be approved with one motion and vote. This will not be, there will not be a separate discussion of these items. Uh, if discussion is desired, then we remove them off of the consent agenda. Uh, in order of the meeting, uh, I don't be discouraged, but we are going to go to, into very, very, very brief executive session, and we'll be right back, but you'll sit here, we'll go in there, and uh, then we'll, we will come back out and continue with the meeting. Uh, the rest of the agenda is in the order as it is presented uh, on, on the website and back there. Um, okay. Um, the, so we're going to move on to executive session, okay? Um, there are no hearings tonight, obviously. So, um, in accordance with Mass General Law C30A, paragraph 21, in parens A6, we will be going into executive session to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property. Uh, I'm declaring that this is an open, we declare that this might have an open meeting, might have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body, and we now proceed to have a motion and take a roll call vote. Can I have a motion, please? 
Mandy Jo. I move to enter into executive session to consider the purchase exchange lease or value of real property as an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. The council will convene an open, reconvene in open session. Is there a second? Second. Okay, George is second. Uh, roll call vote. Baumel? Yes. Brewer? Yes. D'Angelis? Yes. Dumont? Yes. Griesemer? Yes. Haneke? Yes. Ham? Yes. Ross? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Shane? Yes. Schreiber? Yes. Steinberg? Yes. Swartz? Yes. Thank you. Okay. We literally, I hope, will be back in five minutes. Thank you. Bill shows up as a statistic and is available um, currently to um, reporting agencies that report to landlords and is a barrier for low-income people finding new housing so that um, some of the people that I formerly worked with in legal aid um, have been very concerned about both issues because they um, create um, homelessness um, when it may not be necessary either because people can't um, raise the defenses that they need to raise in an eviction proceeding when there are evictions or they um, get penalized um, when they shouldn't be for long periods of time. And uh, the legislature has been working on this. I have uh, spoken with um, our senator and our representative and uh, they're very supportive of this legislation. Um, North, the city of Northampton and a number of other communities have passed similar resolutions and uh, we were um, asked to consider doing so. It was referred to the CRC. I said I would take on uh, the responsibility of uh, seeing it through and communicating with the advocates because they were all people that I worked with in my former career and it's all about issues that I've worked on for um, probably 35 years so that um, if there are any questions I'll be glad to answer them but I think that that's the um, limit of it and I would therefore if permitted to make a motion make a motion otherwise I'll leave it to someone else to make the motion. Okay. Uh, CRC do you want to report? I mean, uh, uh, GOL. GOL um, reviewed this on February 24th and voted it clear, consistent, and actionable by a vote of four to zero with one absent. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The one other th question I have for GOL is, is that uh, the amended motion or the amended uh, resolution has two additional whereas clauses and they are highlighted for um, counselors in yellow so that they're easy to spot. Um, the statistics were statistics provided by the courts of people who actually had entries of lawyers on behalf of um, tenants. Uh, if GOL feels that because they did not see those two whereas clauses and um, the, um, therefore they're uncomfortable making a conclusion, then um, I think a motion on the original uh, resolution is in order. I have no objection to that happening. Otherwise, I have um, those two additional whereas clauses which are explained in the uh, memorandum I referred to. Okay. Those people who are on GOL, uh, just quickly looking for you, they are George, Evan, Mandy Joe, Steve, and Pat, any objection to the additional whereases? Okay. Mandy Joe, did you not catch the missing and at the end of the highlighted whereas? Uh, Evan couldn't resist. <laughs> I, I did not. <laughs> so we could just add that in. Otherwise, yes, it's fine. I see. After the first, second whereas, there should be the word and. Okay. Inside baseball gang, just, you know. It's not easy to be chair on that plates. committee. Uh, tell me, tell me. Um, all right, is there a motion? Mandy Joe. 
Um, I move to adopt the resolution in support of right to counsel in eviction cases and eviction sealing to promote housing opportunity and mobility as presented in the document titled Amherst, Invic Amherst Eviction Council and Homes Act Resolution Amended Draft. Is there a second? Okay. Pat's a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Thirteen zero zero. Um, the next item on our agenda is, in fact, the consent agenda. We have no discussion items tonight, um, and the. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, the Tibet uh, resolution will come before the council on November. I mean, on March 9th in between now and then it will go to the governance organization and legislation committee to determine its actionability it is significant different significantly different from previous resolutions and therefore we felt it needed to be looked at so but tibet day is the 10th so we'll need to have something to act on the next time we meet okay uh, we are moving on to the consent agenda in this case there are two appointments, the Public Tr Shade Tree Committee and a, a appointment for the Energy and Climate Action Committee. And there are also two sets of minutes for February 10th for the public forum and for February 10th for the regular meeting. Does anybody want to remove anything from the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, then could I have a motion please for the consent agenda? Mandy Jo, you're going to be the motion maker tonight. Okay. Um, I move to move the following items and the printed motions there under and approve those items as a single unit. 8A1, approval of the town manager appointments to the Public Shade Tree Committee. 8A2, approval of the town manager appointments to the Energy and Climate Action Committee. 10A, approval of February 10, 2020 Town Council Public Hearing Minutes. 10B, approval of February 10, 2020, Town Council meeting minutes. Is there a second? second. Any further discussion? Yes, Evan. Just felt it would be appropriate for me to say that uh, OCA voted unanimously to recommend that the Town Council approve both of the uh, sets of appointments. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? Then all those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Okay. Then we are moving on to the open container bylaw amendment, and this is our first discussion. Uh, Evan? So in response to some critiques last time about a memo not being dated or having any name on it, uh, I submitted a revised memo uh, that has a bit more explanation in it. Um, and included th the three bylaws from surrounding communities, uh, Northampton, Hadley, and South Hadley, just to show you uh, how what I'm recommending compares to other communities. You'll notice that what I'm recommending is almost identical to Hadley's bylaw, with the exception of swapping out select board with board of license commissioners. Uh, but otherwise, there has been no changes since the last time we looked at this on January 27th. Okay. Are there questions? Yes. Dorothy. Well, as you may remember, I supported this bylaw at the last meeting uh, because it supports local beers and is uh, clearly important for economic development and because I said I have seen it work well in other settings. However, I'm wondering, do we need something here that says that there is an assumption that the permit um, obtainer uh, is responsible to make sure that the behavior at the is, is correct and that if the behavior at an event that they have a permit for does not meet a, an appropriate neighborhood standard that they uh, might not get a permit next time. I mean, is there any kind of threat of, of, of observance and enforcement? Evan. My thought is that that would be part of the Board of License Commissioners' regulations. Um, so all of this does is open the door for them to promulgate regulations and issue permits, and that's where I expect that those types of considerations would be uh, worked in. Great. Okay. Thank you. 
Yes, Alyssa. So speaking of last time, so I was a little unhappy with this only from the standpoint that not having any sense of how those regulations are going to be promulgated in terms of how they're going to draw lines as to who gets a permit and who doesn't get a permit, how that decision might be made um, in terms of organizations, nonprofits, locally based, et cetera, et cetera. And also um, the fact that it's wide open to both areas downtown that quite obviously benefit the downtown economy if you're at Kendrick or on the Common or at Sweetser versus at Mill River in the midst of 15 other activities that are taking place. And so I'm uneasy from that standpoint. I do just want to mention as an aside, because it was mentioned that it benefits local beer, that's not true. Um, we have had alcohol licensing that was for Amherst College, a post uh, associated with the taste, that had no local beers at it whatsoever. So to assume that it means it's going to be local is not a safe assumption. Now, it could be that the License Commission could say that there's there could be an emphasis on that or that would like give somebody additional points toward their application or something if they were using. But there's at this point until they write a regulation like that, which I like you say, I assume would also include stuff about cleaning up, just like when you make a reservation for the common, there's a whole bunch of information there about how you have to clean up that um, you know, that's potentially something that could be passed along to the Board of License Commissions to see if that's something you're allowed to ask for is to give people additional points for local, but it's not. And again, you know, I see a difference between our downtown areas and the outlying parks and other recreation areas, but you know, this, as everyone said, just opens the door and the regulations are in the hands of the Board of License Commissioners. Any other discussion or questions? Mindy Jo. I, I just want to say something technical on, on the agenda. It said it was a first discussion under Rule 8.4. It's actually a first reading under the Charter, charter. 2.10, just to clarify that for the public when we bring it back Thank you. in two weeks. Yes, Kathy? Um, in reading the wording of the other towns, um, one of the things I thought that was missing from the way ours is worded is that the permit, person getting the permit isn't the person walking around with the open container. So there's an activity that's getting a permit, an event is getting a permit. So something needs to be, a permit has been attained, uh, obtained for an event. And a, so it, it doesn't read as, the, as clearly as some of the others. And I just thought we should make it clear that we're talking about the permit isn't that I personally go and get a permit so I can carry around an open container. So a permit for an activity, a permanent for uh, an entity, you know, there's s some larger group getting the permit. So I'm, I don't have specific language because the Northampton words it differently than the others do. Um, um, Evan? I'm on, so I'm, I'm looking at the three examples that I provided of Hadley, South Hadley, and Northampton, and I'm not following where you see, uh, I mean, so what's being proposed is literally identical to Hadley except for swapping out a select board and uh, board of license commissioners, and pretty similar to the other two. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure where you, you're seeing that difference. If you could just point me to that place. Kathy? I'm trying to look through it to find out where, but it was what was bothering me about our language. So I thought I saw in one of the others that an entity had received the permit. <coughs> a town owned, you know, so for an event. So maybe it's. Oh, here. I think the South Hadley's one is that the two preceding sections shall not apply to an activity which has been duly authorized by the select board. So that was where I saw the notion that, you know, we're having a town fair, we're having something. So it was in the South Hadley, the two preceding sections won't apply if there's an activity that has received the permit. Um, so that's, you know, so I'm not sure that's the perfect wording, but I was looking for that the permit is being to the uh, farmer's market, to the beer fair, the whatever the thing, rather than to individuals. So as I said, I don't, I just saw that I liked the wording of 
The others won't apply unless an activity has been approved. So it's not, a per it's not related to the person, it's related to the group, the way I read the South Hadley. Andy Jo. So Northampton and Hadleys don't relate to groups at all because in theory, a person could get a permit. It doesn't have to be a group. It doesn't have to be associated with an event. If you read Hadley's, if you had Hadley's bylaw nearly tracks the one we have right now, but it just, its clause is unless a permit therefore has been, has previously been secured from the select board. Um, it's the consumption of any alcoholic beverage, blah, 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 shall not be permitted on any town home. It's not talking about, so that's, that's a person unless a permit has been obtained. Northampton's no person shall consume, you know, or other container unless application has been approved by the license commission and a license has been listed for the sale and service of alcohol. So it's not specifying in either of those that it has to be an event. So I'm right. not sure. It it's ours, only self Hadley. It yeah. So I, I don't think it's necessary because then it would limit, not, not that I'm saying it's logical to give a permit to a single person, but maybe there's a circumstance that you could, I don't know. <laughs> Evan? Yeah, I guess, so I, you know, I did somewhat intentionally write this to provide some flexibility to the Board of License Commissioners. So in theory, right, under, under this with no regulation, right, I could say I'm going to have a family reunion on the common and I would like the ability to have wine and I am an individual who is applying. So it's not an organization, it's sort of an activity, but how do we define that? Um, but I would defer to the regulations by the Board of License Commissioners to define who is eligible to apply for a permit. Um, and I think they're really the better body um, from a licensing and permitting perspective to think about um, who, sh who or what should be eligible. My goal here was to provide them with flexibility to, to promulgate those regulations. Further discussion? This is a first reading. I want to just note that it has been posted um, as a proposed bylaw amendment, and the, that requires two readings. We will not vote on this again. We will not vote on this until March 9th. Are there further, yes, questions? I do agree that the Board of License would be able to do this, but I would just like to add, I'd like a time limit to be specified um, so that some group that got a permit for something or other doesn't say, well, I have a permit. Um, I, I, I'm only supporting this in terms of time-limited gr group-sponsored activities which relate to the town of good, really. Um, so I just think, I think it needs to be a little bit more precise than it is right now. Again, the, is the, I believe the consensus among some people is that the precision is in the way the Board of License Commissioners then applies the law. It isn't um, trying to then accommodate every possible um, way in which this law could be used or frankly misused. Uh, but the Board of License Commissioners, just as they do with our uh, restaurant licenses, et cetera, apply the law. Um, instead of writing it into the law, then that becomes part of the regulation. Is that? It's kind of wide open. Uh, uh, well, I, I agree Can't with be. that in, in general, but what Dorothy said is, you know, if there's a group event, it's happening on Tuesday night or for two nights, and it's gone and gotten a permit, it's a limited, it's been described. I think giving some guidance on why we're opening up this possibility is useful. Um, even if, you know, I think of uh, the congressional legislation, there's legislative intent. What did we think was going to happen with this bylaw? And then our permitting authority, the licensure can say, okay, they, they didn't mean, you know, like three people over here and four people coming for permits. They meant a larger group activity was, so we should be writing something more here. And I, as I said, I didn't come up with exactly the language to have that sense that this isn't gonna be 
all the time. It's going to be sometimes for some kinds of, because otherwise you could have it be applied discriminatorily. But, you know, Kath for your party, yes, or for another party, no. Um, okay. Kathy, I'm going to call on your uh, referring to federal law. There's law, there's the congressional record, which reports how the law was spoken about at the time it was passed, but that is not part of the law. It is just part of the record. And then it goes to a body who sets up the regulations. And that is how federal and state processes work with regard to laws and regulations. So laws are broad, often, and then it is through the regulations for which often, at least at the federal and state level, there are then hearings on those regulations before they are finally promulgated. Little history lesson. <laughs> Civics lesson, sorry. Um, Andy. So I was thinking about this. I, I, I do support the um, proposed bylaws presently worded, but I did think about it some uh, because um, there's one additional thing that it opens up, and that's the possibility that the um, Board of License Commissioners could decide to set up a process that allows family picnics um, or other events of that nature at the pavilion, say, at um, uh, Mill River to um, have beer for their um, family or whatever event it may be. The reason I Picking that out is because probably the most um, significant incident that I can remember on the select board, uh, Mr. Zomak would probably, probably is shuddering to think because he knows where I'm going with this, um, that there was a family picnic where people illegally brought in alcohol and it caused a tremendous amount of damage to the um, um, area um, around the pavilion and caused a lot of work for a lot of people, um, including Mr. Zomak, the next morning to get the park back into shape to use. Uh, I do think that um, when I said I supported it, it's because I um, count on our Board of License Commissioners if they go that route to uh, appropriately regulate and uh, one of the other difficulties was is that there was very little information even available to hold accountable the people who had uh, sponsored that picnic. So I, I tend to believe that even with that one little bit of a concern um, that uh, an appropriate Board of License regulation process uh, will address the issues that uh, were of concern. Is there any other council discussion? We do have this labeled as an item for public comment. Is there anybody in the public who would like to speak to this particular bylaw? Okay. Uh, then any further discussion with the council? Again, remembering we're not voting tonight. We are voting a uh, two weeks from now. Alyssa. I'm just going to say quickly, even though I know I'm going to get outvoted two weeks from now, I'm not going to vote for it for the fact that it's not limited to the three downtown areas that I think we could clearly delineate within the bylaw as a start. And when that worked out super well and everybody saw how the regulations were working and how they were making decisions as to who qualified and who didn't qualify, then we could certainly revisit it and open it up to the rest of the parks. But I see no reason why to open it up to everything at this point. So that's simply my while, while I, why I will vote. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. Then uh, we're going to move on to the Zala property, which is um, an item under Chapter 61A, right of first refusal. Um, in your packets, uh, you have the following documents relative to this item on the agenda. One is the notice to, of intent to convert to other uses. It was dated November 6th, 2019. The Zala Realty Trust is selling, and in fact has sold the property, to Sunderland Road North LLC for $400,000 uh, and with an intent to develop the land. 
the notice triggered because of it being 61A. It triggered the town's right of first refusal. And that has been a topic of discussion in, of the council. Memos for, from the Conservation Commission and Planning Board recommend that the town council not exercise the right of first refusal. Uh, there are two documents from KP Law which describe it. Um, have been also presented to you as discussed at our last meeting. The council's options are to either exercise our right of first refusal, and that moves forward to step into the purchase and sale agreement. The second option is to not exercise the right of first refusal and vote not to buy the land, or frankly, the option that we're recommending is that we take no action. The um, new owner has paid five years back taxes on the property. Is there any further discussion? Mandy Jo. Um, we had the memos from the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission. Can we just get a verbal I, I, uh, report from the town manager on the manager's recommendation? Yes, thank you. Yes, so um, these, the Planning Board and the Conservation Commission has reviewed this. Uh, we don't, uh, the assistant town manager and I do not recommend that the town council take any action. This will, this will, um, the option to purchase it will expire next week. The owner is not seeking us, to, is not asking the council to take any action, so we recommend that you take no action tonight. Okay. Any further questions or discussion? Okay, then we're going to move on. Um, the next item is um, the product of, of consultation with previous select board members, both of whom are still on, or who are now on the council, and also looking at the charter, as well as talking with the chair of the school committee. That item particularly relates to how do we go about replacing somebody, an elected person. Thank you. Uh, an elected person uh, who resigns. And in this case, it is Eric Nakajima. He's resigned to take a job in Boston, uh, which does not allow him to be here enough to perform the duties of being on the school committee. Uh, so the cover memo basically outlines what's in the memo. Uh, the places we need to focus on today is on the timeline, on the proposed draft, and then important to you to us so that we can move forward consistent with the process outlined in the charter we do need to focus on the announcement um, the other two we can bring back for further discussion uh, but let's just begin with the timeline and let me just say that I found out late this afternoon that one of the school committee members cannot be here on the 14th so um, we are going to have to think about how we deal with that piece. They also are not able, based on where they are, going to uh, participate remotely. Um, so um, are there other questions or discussion just on the timeline? Yes, Dorothy. Well, it, it looked pretty organized to me. Uh, so I guess the one question is, um, will the public have a chance to respond and to send in their um, letters of intent? The public or the candidates? The candidates. The candidates, definitely. In fact, they will not be considered candidates unless they do file a statement of interest. Just, do they have time to do it? Oh, they have plenty of time. We have to post this notice for 21 days. In fact, given this timeline, we're proposing we're posting it for almost a full 40 days. We're trying to give people as much possible time as necessary. However, candidates need to have their statements in by the end of March, but again, that still gives them 29 days to respond. Okay, other questions about the timeline? Alyssa. I just wanna emphasize um, it's unfortunate that you found out today about the school committee member who can't make it because um, we're obviously already outnumbering them significantly under the old um, form of government. It was five to four or 
five to five, as the case may be, and now it's 13 to four. Um, so I do think that's unfortunate, but I do think it's really important to have this meeting on a Tuesday night because I know a lot of people who would say, I can do this, but I can't serve on planning board because I can't do Wednesdays, or I can do school committee on Tuesdays, which is not every Tuesday, just like council's not every Monday, but I think it's a mistake to try and do it on a night that's not a regular school committee night. I'm also well aware of the holidays we're trying to work around. The We've got Passover, we've got school break week. There's a ton of things that we're trying to right. accomplish here. So um, not easy, but I would push us, if at all possible, to find another Tuesday. I just don't know what Tuesday that would be. The most logical Tuesday night is to move it forward to April 7th, which is um, the day after our council meeting. And it's not the wrong Passover date? It, that is actually not, Passover begins the next night at sundown. Andy? Just so you know, I will not be available on the 7th, but um, there's always going to be somebody. Evan, are you also shaking your head you're not available on the 7th? Be because I was under the impression this was on the 14th, I have scheduled something else for the 7th that perhaps I could get out of, but okay. currently unavailable. I'm, I'm in the same boat, by the way. <laughs> yes. Mandy Jo. Um, I wonder if we could push it back a week instead of forward a week. I don't know whether that's possible. I know that goes a longer than the 45 days, but with the wording of the charter, it might be something to, worth asking the town attorney if it's within 45 days of said vacancy occurring, the president of the town council shall call a special meeting. Does calling it meaning, mean noticing it such that we could maybe go to the 21st Except if that is school vacation week which is which is horrible for a school committee right? Right. Um, but but i wonder if there's some way we can figure out something like that well i i know i wouldn't advocate leaving this position open longer than we need to simply because the school committee's down one person but and and I have to be honest, I'm actually, when I found this out, I asked uh, the chair of the school committee to poll the member to find out what their availability was during the week before and the week of, and I said, at least as at the moment, I have not heard back. What is the date that that Well, the date that we had originally identified was the 14th of April, which is a Tuesday. We were going to meet in this room at six o'clock. Uh, the date, the another date would be to move it forward one week, which would be the 7th, which is the day after our council meeting. And um, again, it would be a six, six o'clock in this room. The following Tuesday, which is the 21st, is school vacation week. And so that would mean we would go all the way to the 28th. I believe, uh, Mr. Valkman, that um, Mandy Jo has interpreted the language of the charter correctly, as long as we post a meeting within 45 days. Yeah, I'd, I th I'd like to look at that language again, but I think yeah. that's true. I, I will also say that the school committee members, the remaining members, would probably not like to go as far as the 28th of April. Yeah, yes. I just want to say I agree with asking because it was always our impression in the past on this sort of thing that it meant that you had to call the meeting, not that the meeting had to take place within that right. period of time, despite what the newspaper wrote today. It's right. not the way we've been, ever so, interpreted it in the past. So for the purposes of the public and the council, at this point, don't focus on that date. We will be polling you and finding a better date. Uh, that can include the maximum number of school committees available, school, school committee members available. Okay, anything else about the calendar? Okay, then uh, the next is uh, really drafted, uh, starting with what was the select board policy. I did not call it a policy. To me, it's a process, uh, and. Uh, meaning it has the option of having some changes over time as long as you're consistent with the charter. It's very extensive, but tries to provide some levels of flexibility. Um, but 
on the other hand, has to follow the charter. And um, I don't feel like we have to adopt this tonight. It's probably uh, since you didn't get it until yesterday, I believe. Uh, and I apologize for that, but I've been, this has been my homework for the whole last week and a half, is getting this policy ready. Um, so what I do want to focus on, however, and it does relate to the policy, is the announcement, because Eric's resignation is effective March 1st. The first um, workday is March 2nd, and so therefore that is the first day that we would publish uh, the announcement. And again, we want to give people maximum time to respond. Yes. Uh, it said that the candidate has to be a voter of the town. Yes. Um, could that mean if they, in fact, weren't registered or hadn't voted, that if they go to the town clerk and register, that satisfies the requirement? Yes. Meaning they just turned 18 and now they can register. <laughs> we hope they've been registered before. Um, other questions about the announcement? Yes, Mandy Jo. Um, we're talking about Appendix C. Is that what we're talking about, the draft Appendix announcement? Appendix C, yes. Um, if we have some wording changes that don't really affect that, can we just send them to you? Yes. Or if we have, you know, yes, wording changes, that kind of thing. Um, I know one of the questions that has arisen and continues to swirl around is the, which, which it did with OCA as well in the last round of interviews, and that is the idea of publishing the questions in advance so that the candidates know what the questions will be, which, you know, it gives them the advantage, but at the same time, it doesn't get those people who are interviewing the candidates the opportunity to see a spontaneous result. So, um, on the other hand, we can't, easily develop a set of questions and not have them be public. There's no way to do that. Okay. Further questions on the announcement? And then I just want to point out that the other attachments, which were generously provided to me by Alyssa and also uh, Angela Mills and so forth, were the ability for us to look at what had been done in the past, which was really helpful. Uh, and I want to thank all of the people who took the opportunity to weigh in on this. And now you all have that opportunity. So, okay. Any further discussion? Then we're not going to take a motion on the announcement, but I do want to get a sense that it's okay for us to receive input and then for us to post the announcement before the next council meeting. Yes, you Alyssa. Just to make a motion to? So it, it, it is probably then a substantive um, comment as opposed to a wording comment, which is associated with resumes. We had this conversation at OCA yeah. this morning, and I firmly believe that asking for resumes or even accepting resumes as an option is a classist thing to do that has nothing to do with the performance of the Amherst School Committee member. So I think it should be clear that we resume, as I had edited at one point, uh, resumes will not be accepted. Now, people can write whatever they want in their one-page thing. If they think talking about their degree from Tufts is really important, that's great. They can do that in their one-page thing, and they can do it during their answers to their questions. But I think it is completely inappropriate to accept them associated with school committee application. Is there any further comment on that particular issue? Mandy Jo. I would support that change. Okay. All right, so I will uh, integrate that into both the announcement and the process. Okay. Any further discussion? Points you want to make? Going once, going twice, moving on. Okay. Um, the next one is the proposed committee uh, for council liaisons, and I believe, Evan, that we're back to you. Yes, and of course I don't have it open in front of me, so I'm going to try and do that quickly. Uh, so you have had, since the January 6th meeting, uh, a report from OCA 
that recommended council liaisons to nine different multiple member bodies of the town uh, that was the project of an OCA discussion. Uh, at our last meeting, uh, we had a very brief conversation about it, and the president directed anyone who had comments or feedback on those uh, to provide them to me as the chair to take to OCA. Uh, we did get comments from one counselor. Uh, I do not have a written report or response for you because we discussed them this morning, and I did not have time to write one, um, but I will tell them to you now. Um, because one did result in a substantive change. And so one of the comments um, was that because of the close working relationship that CRC has with the zoning subcommittee, because at this time there's the potential of a CRC representative to the zoning subcommittee, uh, there was a thought that assigning both a liaison and a CRC representative would be duplicative. There was then the thought that we could count the CRC representative as a liaison. But we worked very hard to construct fairly restrictive liaison rules, and there was a feeling that calling the representative a liaison uh, would do one of two things, either bind that representative to the liaison rules, which would be very restrictive and uh, not really fulfill what I think the role is of that CRC, liaison, uh, CRC representative, um, or put us in a situation where we're saying, well, for this one special liaison, they don't have to abide by the rules, which also made us uncomfortable. Um, and so uh, this morning, OCA voted uh, 401 to actually rescind its recommendation of a liaison to the zoning subcommittee of the planning board. Uh, so you have in front of you, uh, and then on the motion sheet, nine different uh, multiple member bodies that uh, OCA has recommended a liaison to, um, but OCA is actually rescinding its recommendation for that final liaison of the zoning subcommittee of the planning board um, because of the relationship between CRC and uh, the zoning subcommittee. Uh, the second substantive comment had to do with inclusion of a few committees that did not necessarily meet the criteria for liaisons, the Disability Access Advisory Committee, uh, the Council on Aging, and also the LSSC Commission. Uh, OCA discussed, uh, and so there was a recommendation to also rescind that recommendation. Uh, OCA discussed that and respectfully disagreed with the commenter. Uh, there was a feeling um, that those are committees that have often been siloed. There was a feeling that as we are facing um, some fairly substantial capital projects and also uh, some potential downtown investments and redevelopment in our town. Uh, these are communities that we really need to keep in mind and we felt as though recently we've been having conversations where at one point we'll go, uh, what does the Disability Access <coughs> Advisory Committee say about this? And we'll go, oh, we don't know if they've discussed it. And we, There's a feeling that at least in this moment in Amherst, it would be useful to have a conduit of information between those committees um, and the council. And so OCA is maintaining its recommendation for liaisons to those. And so the motion is intact except striking that last bullet for the zoning subcommittee of the planning board. Would you therefore tell us which committees are now on the table for liaisons? Certainly will. They are the Affordable Housing Trust, the Board of Health, the Board of License Commissioners, the Community Preservation Act Committee, the Council on Aging, the Disability Access Advisory Committee, the LSSC Commission, and the Transportation Advisory Committee. Okay. Discussion. Andy. Uh, just uh, two quick things. One is, is that I'm assuming that if in a future date we um, think that, a few, that an additional committee should be considered, it can be added, but that uh, what we're trying to do right now is to get a baseline start and I'm perfectly comfortable with the recommendation. And the other thing in relation to what you just uh, haven't just reported, having been the select board liaison to both the Disability Access Advisory Committee and the LSSC Commission, I uh, wholly support those uh, that recommendation and will only speak to it further if asked. Okay. Yes, Evan. 
Yeah, thank you for bringing that first part up because I actually forgot another part of OCA's discussion, um, apologies to my OCA friends, um, which was there was a comment about annually reviewing which committees get liaisons with the suggestion that maybe we'll want to add more, maybe we'll realize we don't need one. Um, and so OCA also voted, and I don't have the exact motion language in front of me, and it was somewhat complicated motion language, um, but basically to amend town council rules of re requesting that GOL look at town council rules of procedure 10.8K, which says um, the town council shall maintain a priority list of bodies most likely to propose measures to the council and to amend that rule to indicate that uh, the town council will um, annually review a priority list um, of committees that should have liaisons to get at the fact that every year we should be looking at not only liaison assignments which happen on an annual business, uh, basis, but also whether or not we want to keep having the same committees have liaisons um, because different needs needs might change over time. Um, would you as chair of OCA please put that in the form of an email and we will I will then send it on to GOL. Yes. Thank you. Other discussion? Pat. Um, I support these committees, so it's not really a discussion question. When are we actually going to put this into effect? It's been over a year. We've been talking about liaisons for a long time, so I'd like to know when it's going to happen. Um, one of the reasons why I would like this settled tonight is because along with the next discussion, which is the standing committees, is to do the poll so that at the next meeting we... You hear the assignments for the standing committees and you vote on the assignments for liaisons. Okay, yes, Dorothy. Um, Evan, Evan referred to this but briefly, but just I think for the people um, who are watching, the reason these committees were chosen is very, I think, well uh, delineated. Regularly submit proposed policies and bylaws to the town council promulgate regulations that have significant impacts on town residents or businesses, and distribute funds sourced from local taxes. And I think it seemed to be pretty well done. Okay. Any f yes, Mandy Jo. So I am not going to support this motion. And it's not because I don't completely agree with the committee list as it stands or anything like that. It is because I have come to the conclusion that Adding more work onto counselors, even if it's only eight counselors, is not something at this point I can support. Um, I know it's a minimal amount of work, but we have been for the last year saying this is a large job um, and continually saying we need to find a way to figure out how to lessen the amount of work we are spending and the amount of hours we are spending on a weekly basis on council stuff. Um, and I know we've crafted the liaison rule so that people don't have to go to meetings and all, but it still adds work to us. And I think there might be other ways we can get the information we need from certain committees without putting extra work on counselors, whether that be tasking the staff liaison through the town manager um, with reporting to the council monthly or tasking the committee itself with a report to the council monthly or bi-monthly or something else that doesn't actually add work to our already amount of works that we would like to see lessen. So for those reasons, I can't support actually creating any committees for liaisons at this time. Kathy? Um, I think I'm gonna make a similar comment, although it's not quite as sweeping. If some of these, we want to know what's happening within that committee. If we set up space on our council committees, um, and I wouldn't make it monthly or even bi-monthly, you know, quarterly, whatever is the right time to invite the chair of that committee to come in and say the key things they're looking at and that are in front of them, we would both get a better sense of what the committee is currently wrestling with or going to be wrestling with, and better because it wouldn't be filtered through a counselor summarizing their view from either reading minutes, and if you, I will tell you, if you try to read minutes on some of these committees, 
they don't always exist or, you know, some of our own committees when I tried to read them, but, you know, because there's, there's a delay. It's not that there are no minutes. So not attending the meetings regularly probably won't give you as good a sense um, if you just try to read minutes. Um, and most of them aren't like the um, planning board televised so that you can't simply go and look at Amherst Media and see what happened during the, you know, that's an easier one to summarize. So um, my question would be, if we come up with a list of eight, and then you ask who among us might want to do, be a liaison, and you get three or four people wanting to be a liaison with anything, um, do we just proceed with that? You know, so this would be a priority list. And, you know, we, we actually talked about this a fairly long time in the Ad Hoc Rules Committee way back when and came with a tentative list in last July. So I have a question of if we have eight and there are four of us that want to be liaisons to a few of these, um, do we just say the other four just don't have liaisons? Because I certainly don't think we should require someone to be a liaison to something that they're not volunteering for. So that would be my question. We can come up with a priority list, but we might not fill all the slots. Thoughts on that? George, I'm sorry, I didn't sorry. see your hand. I thought that one of the attractions for me of this is that it, I hear what Mandy's saying, and I think we all share that concern, but one of the attractions of this whole idea of liaisons, which by the way, we've been working on it now for quite some time, so just to jettison it is, causes me deep pain, but um, <laughs> if we do it, we do it, but is to get us out of our silos um, and also to, um, you know, at some level, whether it's, it's, I assume there'll be at least some human contact. I understand that people won't be going to meetings all the time, and they shouldn't be, but hopefully there'll be some human contact between uh, a member of the council and some of these uh, multiple member bodies. And I think that's important that, 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 that people know that, that we're out there, and, we're, and I think it's also important that we, have, we get out of our own silos a little bit. Um, so yes, it's gonna be more work, um, and everyone will have to make up their own minds as to how much they can give to it. Um, I thought the other idea was that um, if we do have eight people who are willing to do this, um, we all know who they are, and if you have a question about uh, something that's going on with the Board of Health or with LSSC or the Council on Aging, you can go to that counselor and say, you know, what's happening? So um, that's a, a resource for us as a, as a group, and I think it's also valuable for us to, to get outside of our silos a little bit, and I think it's also valuable for um, some of these bodies to, to interact with counselors at, at least on a very basic level. So um, I hear, Andy's, uh, hear Mandy's concern, um, but I think this is one where it's worth the extra effort. Additional comments? Evan. So I guess it's actually a question for the council, because um, I, I actually share Mandy's concern and, and have actually been pretty forward about the fact that I do not want to be a liaison uh, for that very reason. Um, and I'm glad that we have fewer liaison positions than counselors so there isn't a feeling of obligation within the council. Um, but I think that Kathy brought up a really good point, which is if four people come forward and say we want to be liaisons, do we leave four committees without liaisons? Um, and I think that that might be a question for whatever body that gets this gets referred to, whether that's if this passes OCA or GOL. Um, but a question I am curious for the council because OCA sort of talked about this, but didn't make any recommendation, which was, um, would it be permissible if someone wanted to be a liaison to multiple bodies? Um, maybe no one wants to, but if someone here is particularly masochistic, maybe they do. And so, um, but is that something, just to give guide, given that it is likely to come back to a committee on which I serve, uh, <laughs> I am curious um, what the feeling of the council is. Alyssa. So I guess I have two questions. One is, I don't know why it's going back to a committee unless you're talking about to actually assign appointments, which, yeah, I mean, that is a, a thing the committee could do, which despite many other comments I've made, I would have thought would be just as easy to have the president do while they're assigning other appointments. 
But whatever, that being, that being separate, because we did talk about that extensively in the past as well. I do think it's fine if only four people want to do it, and I think it's fine if two of them want to go to three different committees. I think that's totally fine, and we reevaluate at the end of the year. We're already a, a third of the way through the year, and as people realize, oh, I don't want to do this anymore, <laughs> or it's not working out because I can never find out what's happening from that committee, mm -hmm. And then maybe it will become obvious that certain things, a, a council committee is a better connection than a liaison. But I think we start out, we try it, we see who wants to do it. It's fine if not everybody wants to do it. It's fine if somebody wants to be a masochist because that's the kind of time they have on their hands. And then we reevaluate and we just keep a list somewhere that shows, as George indicated, who's assigned to what so that we have it as a resource, so that our council committees have it as a resource. And then we, we decide at the end of the year, eh, that was a bad idea. Um, Andy Joe was so right, <laughs> and Kathy was so right, and that'll be fine. But um, I say we give it a shot and get going and see what happens. Sarah. I'd just like to say from someone who served um, on AgCom and then had someone from the select board Liaise, I think that it did give me the feeling that select board did. There was somebody from the select board that listened to what we were doing, who had a sense of what was important to us, and I, I feel like it made me, our, our committee, feel more heard. And then when something came up in select board, they had a, more of a knowledge, deeper knowledge of what we were doing, and that was very helpful to us. So I think what George is saying about there being that, that human touch I think it, it deepens a lot of what happens here and with another board, so I would say let's give it a try. Uh, I want to just say thank you, Sarah, for bringing that up because I was fortunate as the chair of the DPW Fire Station Advisory Committee to have an excellent liaison who's sitting next to me. And when it came time to get ready for a town meeting, I, I couldn't have done it without that additional advice on how to steer through town meeting. And I don't think steering through the council is quite as challenging, but it has its moments. So um, I want to, if for those people, and as I will poll, I will take into consideration if people want to be two or three liaisons, that's great. Um, and let me just um, go on to say, I think we also have to put on the lens of the public and the committees, and this is a way of us saying we care. So without, any further conversation? Okay, vote. Motion. Okay. So I move to designate the following town committees for town council liaisons, Affordable Housing Trust, Board of Health, Board of License Commissioners, Community Preservation Act Committee, Council on Aging, Disability Access Advisory Committee, LSSE Commission, Transportation Advisory Committee. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye and raise your hand. Aye. aye. Opposed? Abstain. So it was 10 1 2. Okay, thank you. Um, now we're going to move on to the reorganization of standing committees. And I believe, George, this is... Yes, it is. Yours. <laughs> you have in your packet, and I know you've all read it carefully, uh, the memo from GOL, from the chair, that lays out the proposal, which I don't think should come as too much of a surprise to most of you, though. There is an added wrinkle. Um, and then um, the rationale, briefly, and then looking at some of the particulars of the proposal in, in greater detail. Um, I'm just going to, um, perhaps for the sake of the public, uh, just briefly sketch what we are proposing. And then I think at that point, maybe we should just turn to general discussion. Um, actually, one of, uh, first of all, the history of this, we've been, this committee's been working on this since our November 20 meeting. And so we've had uh, a lot of time to uh, discuss it. I'd like to express particular thanks to Evan, who I think has done extraordinary work. Um, all my committee members have been great, but I want to just uh, make a special uh, acknowledgement of his contribution. But we as a committee have been working on this now since November 20th. Um, we've uh, gotten counselor feedback from 11, I believe, of the 13 counselors, and we've gone through all the uh, comments uh, carefully, 
and I think in some cases we've tried to incorporate them into the final proposal. Um, you've already done as a body one of the things that we recommended, and I think that was pretty much a no-brainer, which was to disband the audit committee and move its duties to finance. Um, and we did that at the January 27 meeting. Um, so that right away uh, knocks out three uh, committee uh, uh, appointments. What we're recommending now is that we create a new standing committee called Town Services and Outreach, abbreviated TSO, and that uh, will absorb some of CRC's current responsibilities as well as OCA's outreach responsibilities. We're secondly uh, recommending that we redistribute the appointments function of OCA among three standing committees, CRC, TSO, and GOL, with the reallocation of Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals appointments delayed until July 1, 2020. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And finally, uh, related to that, we, we are recommending that we keep OCA in existence until June 30, 2020, with its sole remaining function being to make appointments to the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals and to finalize the process for those appointments. As of July 1, 2020, the appointments function for Planning Board and ZPA would be moved to CRC and OCA would be dissolved. Um, the ultimate result of that, just in sheer numbers, would be reduce the number of appointments from 23 to 20. It's not a huge uh, decline, but it is something. Um, you have the revised charges in your packet for OCA, GOL, and CRC, um, as well as the proposed TSO charge. And uh, again, just briefly, the rationale, as you can see here, is first of all to make this body more efficient, um, try to even out as much as possible the workload among committees, provide some greater clarity as to where council referrals might go, um, give more councillors an opportunity to engage in substantive issues, and reduce, if possible, the number of councillors serving on council committees. And we feel that this proposal meets those goals. This was never undertaken in any way, shape, or form as a comment on any of the standing committees or any individual or group of individuals. It was done precisely for the reasons I've just stated. Um, to look at us as a body and see if there's any way we can make ourselves more efficient and try. I think in particular, uh, one concern was to see if we could lessen the, what seemed to be an un unsustainable workload on CRC. Um, so that was the, the re rationale, reason we, we began this, and you now have the, the proposed product in front of you. Um, I think the rest of it is, is, gets into the details, so maybe at this point, we can turn to just So I'm going to suggest that we take each committee separately, not in a motion, but in a discussion way, and that uh, we start with CRC. Are there discussion points about CRC at this time? Dorothy. Um, I don't understand why, um, I guess, UTAC, the relationship between the town and the university, is in um, TSO, uh, I could see it being divided, but I mean, the CRC focus on broader, more long range issues, planning, zoning, land use, housing, homelessness, review a master plan, economic development. Uh, some of the th interactions with the university just go in that area. So that, that's my um, major comment on this today anyway. Okay. Are there other comments on CRC? Yes, Darcy. Just looking at the charge, um proposed charge, it seems like the, uh, the purpose of the charge seems to um, list the areas that would be covered, and then the charge also lists the areas that, where the, this committee would make review and make recommendations, and they don't really match up. Um, so I'm wondering how that happened because it it really seems like the purpose should mirror the areas listed below and vice versa. So, for example, um, sustainability was added. Um, com community sustainability initiatives. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. That's great. Um, so why isn't it listed above? And some of them are listed above and some of them are not. So I'm just saying it should be more consistent. There's no reason why the lists are different. So your comment is not one of 
questioning what its responsibilities are, but one of parallelism in the yes. actual descript description. Yes, that okay. is exactly right. I'm, I'm looking to see, I mean, if we need to tinker, that's one thing. If we need to go back to the drawing board, that is a whole separate issue. Okay. Are there other, other questions or comments about CRC? Yes, Sarah. So um, I, I think I was one of the people who originally said because of um, the fact that CRC deals so heavily really with the Planning Board and, and, and Zoning Board of Appeals that having them be the ones to look at appointments made sense to me. In thinking about it today, because we're going back to like OCA is trying to figure out ZBA, one part of the process is that whoever is the chair needs to contact every single person who has applied and then once they've contacted them, they need to find a time when everybody can meet all together at one specific time. I'm just thinking about, and I asked Evan to maybe keep track of how many hours it, it takes. And I'm not saying that I don't think that this should be in CRC, but I think when we review things again in a year, I would like to review that this CRC is such a busy body that does a lot of really critical thinking. How, how, did this, once you've done it, has this added way too much? Because one of the goals was to try to make sure there's less of a workload for counselors, and I'm wondering if maybe it will end up being like a top heavy thing for people who are on CRC, and it may not, but I just think that that's something I would want to bring up as a reservation, and then in another year when we review, we can say this was something blah, blah, blah. I was thinking about, did that happen or not? Okay. All right. Other comments, questions? Okay, then let's move on to GOL. I'm sorry, Kathy. Kathy. Yes, I was. That, that's quite all right. Go ahead. I'm patient, Kathy. Um, I I I was actually comparing old GOL to new GOL because um, there's an expansion of responsibilities here and some subtle rewording, most of which I think reads all right. But I want to just draw attention to two. Um, one is on liaisons. Um, we just went through, are there liaisons or not? I don't think a subcommittee of the council should figure out which council members go on which committee for liaison. I think if we have more than one person wanting something, we should just have a full committee discussion and try to sort it out, because you run a real risk um, of <laughs> most favored nations kind of treatment without meaning to, you know? I mean, it's just, there are only 13 of us, so telling a, five of us will figure out how to sort out the others. So I don't think council recommendations even for appointments, just do a polling, you know, and figure out how many we have for the same. And I would say the same for JCPC and Budget Coordinating Group, JCPC, the last time there were three people who wanted three slots, no problem. And we actually wrote it in a rule. It's 10.6 um, in the rules of procedure, because we had a bit of a discussion about this, that if it was a council appointment, we'd have a discussion at the council level. We'd find out who wanted those positions, and then we'd vote on it. Um, so it's not a president. So I don't think delegating this to com committee, even for recommendations, is a good idea. Um, and I'll, one unfortunate experience that someone I know well had at a university was the um, recommendations for salary com increase committee uh, of professors. And somehow the people who were on the committee got more salary increases than other people who weren't on the committee. So you really wanted to be on that committee. But I, you know, I don't think that would happen, but I just don't think we should put, out, put that risk. So I would remove those two so I don't see any reason why. And I forget, where, where did the, um, who's gonna figure out 
where the finance committee is that one to TSO? No, no, that's it. It should be in the center. It's here. That's also it. And, and that one, I'd just like to have a larger discussion about the non-voting members of finance committee, you know, on the process of that. Um, it, it was an interesting experience, and I think it worked out well. We have terrific members. But, you know, having some idea of who's coming on a committee, knowing that there's been a discussion from people who are on the committee, so I'm not sure delegating it um, this way makes sense. And I, I don't know whether anyone else on finance wants to chip in. You know, we had a long discussion, and so I don't want to revisit that, whether this would be interviews done by the finance committee, for example, um, with in an open way of people who wanted to come on, uh, just to make sure it wasn't uh, the finance chair was the only one, I think, compared to planning, who wasn't invited into an interview. You know, it, we've treated other committees. But I was particularly wanted to flag um, the appointing council members or making recommendations. Then the, the other, so moving away from that issue, um, the earlier language on GOL, I thought made it very clear that for the most part, when GOL was addressing uh, bylaws and other things, it was because they'd been referred to GOL for reading them carefully. Now there's an addition that uh, actually in authorizes provos revisions of the general bylaws to the committee. It's a new sentence that's been added rather than something's been referred. And I think to the extent something about our general bylaws comes up to us as problematic, we would refer it and, and get advice, but I think it should be a full discussion. And I don't think we should expand to saying that somehow we're regularly revisiting all that wording change that was just done in the general bylaws. It's an expansion that doesn't seem necessary. So it was an additional uh, duty put on this committee. and. My uh, feeling is you probably have a backlog right now because we referred a bunch of bylaws from the general bylaw revisions to GOL to come back to us on it. These aren't easy. You know, one was completely eliminated, others were reworded, wording was added. So going back regularly to review the town's bylaws, it says propose revisions. Um, so that would mean reading them, thinking about them, should they be reworded differently? So I would remove that expansion. Um, so I had those two questions about uh, referring council appointments to a subcommittee of the council. I don't know what I, where I actually think non-voting members find it. And then this expansion of the actual authority of the committee. So, uh, Kathy, I just want to clarify. In the charge, under governance and organization, it's the second from the last bullet that you're speaking to? Make recommendations to the town council regarding appointments by the town council for non-voting council liaisons, blah, blah, blah. That one? Yes, yes exactly. And the councilors going on to joint capital planning committee, councilors going on to the budget coordinating yeah. group. So this is where a subcommittee of the councilor Right. would be reviewing which councillors go where. Um, and I don't see why we just wouldn't bring that to the whole council the way we just did with JCPC. You took, you took a poll of who was interested, and then we got to see. Um, I'd like to treat the conversation. If there's any other comment about that particular item, uh, let's have it now. Yes, Alyssa. Thank you. I was going to ask you to separate those two concepts. I will. Because Absolutely. That's a, so that's let's great. go with the first one. So doing the first one, I wonder if the solution to that isn't to, to see how the last bullet point in governance and organization says, if referred by the council. I wonder if we just add, if referred by the council, to that bullet point, because then it's a home for it if we decide to do it. But I like the idea, I, I prefer what we're doing now in terms of polling with JCPC, et cetera. But if we wanted to refer it to somebody, this is the body that would get it, rather than having to guess which body should get it. So I would, I would say that we could change the 
that whole tenor of that by saying, if referred by the council, and then when it's time to do liaisons, we could sit here and say, well, we have a committee whose charge is, if we refer it to them, they can decide the liaisons, or do we just want to pull, pull it and do it ourselves? And then we have, mm -hmm. a, then we have choices. Okay. Additional, Andy? Yeah, it's hard for me to make a substantive comment for discussion tonight because I was merely that I had intended when talking with the Finance Committee and inviting conversation about the um, for charge for the Finance Committee that's been proposed and kind of put on hold until we get comments to ask if they have an opinion about um, what committee should be uh, making the recommendations on non-voting finance committee members. Since we aren't having that discussion until tomorrow, I really have nothing else to say. Additional comment? Evan. I'm sorry, Darcy. I, I would just say that I um, agree with Kathy's comments um, and the removal of the, of the um, next to the last bullet under governance and organization um, because it really feels like it, it, it contradicts uh, rules that the ad hoc rules committee put together. Um, and, and I feel like there's, you know, there's a tendency to want to put everything in a committee. Uh, and each time we do that, we kind of carve away f uh, uh, the power of the full council to do certain things. Um, and this, these are areas where we have the ability to make decisions on the basis of the full council. And I wouldn't add the, the clause if, if referred by the council because that's too suggestive that we do it, that we, that we actually do refer it to a subcommittee because it's an easy thing to do. And I would also remove the, the uh, proposed revisions to the general bylaws because again, that feels like it's um, um, giving too much away to a committee of the council that is the bailiwick of the full council. So we're going to stick with the one about uh, liaisons, finance committee, JCPC, and budget coordinating. Um, any further comment on that? Yes, Evan. Yes, yeah, so uh, I like Alyssa's suggestion a lot of just adding if referred by the council. Um, because I, I do think that the way that we have done BCG and JCPC has worked. But there could be a situation where the council... Um, a lot of what we're doing is to try to minimize the time we spend in meetings, right? And there could be a situation where there's multiple people going for a limited number of vacancies and we can't figure it out for the council and it might be nice to send it to a committee if we want to, but the point of keeping this in there is that not that we will always send something to a committee, but we know where things go if we want to. And so that's the whole point of a lot of this revision is everything has a home. We don't always necessarily need to send it to a home in the same way that we didn't send, say, ECAC's climate action goal somewhere, but knowing that there is a place to go and having that be clear. So I think I would support what Alyssa's suggestion of adding if referred, um, but then if we are going to do that, I think we actually would want to take out non-voting finance committee members and put that as a separate bullet, um, because I do think that's appropriate in GOL. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to go into any other committee, um, and certainly not finance, because we don't permit any committee to appoint their own members. Um, and so that would not be a referral. That's something that would sit with the body itself. Dorothy. Uh, I understand Evan's point of view in terms of efficiency. But I think that some of the things I've been hearing um, have to do with perception of fairness. And to me, it's very important that the council continue to work with, I think, a sense of good faith that we've had. And perhaps having a, count, a committee, a council committee, choose other councilors for other things might cause problems. And therefore, I would say maybe the slower way we've been doing it might be better. Pat. I feel like we're missing something in that we're saying GOL would make recommendations to the council 
those recommendations would be looked at, questioned, supported, voted against. So I don't see how we're not involving the full council. Um, I also, in terms of proposed revisions to general bylaws, but I can wait if you, um, that's part of our job. GOL reviews bylaws for clarity, consistency, and actionability. Uh, and proposing revisions is exactly what we do, and then we bring it back to the council, and it's our votes, not GOL vote, that dominates whether the bylaw gets changed, whether re the recommendation is accepted. So when we bring in trust and all this other stuff, there seems to me to be a lack of trust and kind of fear that somehow or other GOL is taking power that, that it's not doing. Um, I'd like to stick to that, the first bullet. Just stay with that, and then we'll get to the bylaw one later. So make recommendations to the town council regarding appointments uh, by the town council for non-voting liaisons, and then there has been a suggestion that we move the non-voting finance committee members uh, into a separate bullet, uh, counselors to the joint capital planning committee and counselors to the budget coordinating group, and then there has been a suggestion if referred by the council. Um, any further discussion on that item? All right, then I would like a motion on that one. Do you, how the hell are we, are we gonna sit here and edit these? Mandy Jo. Great, thank you. Um, it's eight o'clock, we're going to take a break. No, let's finish this one. Let's do that. Okay, uh, I, I would like to go to the next one, which is uh, the bullet right after, make recommendations to the town council and on, on appointments for the clerk of the council, additional council staff, the town manager or interim town manager, if referred by the council. And this, I assume, was with the idea that everything should have a home Yes, I'll answer that because um, I'm the one that asked that it put in the, the draft charge. Yes, because at some point these things could happen and if it happens and if the council decides not to create an ad hoc committee, it's clear where it goes. Obviously, for some of this, it might be most logical to create an ad hoc committee, right. but if th this gives a choice then of send it to that committee or create one. I thank you for that clarification. If it did not say, if referred by the council and you did not discuss the issue of ad hoc, I would be absolutely opposed to the idea that the council was not selecting our town manager. Thank you. Andy. Yeah, I was, uh, the other thing that I had thought about was uh, make recommendations for a process I suppose, um, but having been um, involved in the recruitment and selection of a town manager, uh, it was a long, carefully thought out, difficult process, and it had to be done very carefully and correctly in order to adhere both to, I think, Amherst and what Amherst is about, um, the select board as it existed at the time, and the law. Right. Um, and those are all big pieces, as well as what is a con what are common recruitment methodologies for um, just personnel practices. There was heavy reliance on um, our former personnel director to give us guidance on that too. Uh, and uh, I am a little bit concerned about just saying make recommendations uh, on the appointments that it sounds like they're gonna run the whole process and then bring a proposal to hire somebody. And uh, I think that it's uh, far too great and I, so I really think it's really about process 
initially, then once the process is going, um, it may be an ad hoc committee, it could be a number of different approaches, um, but uh, I think it's too broadly worded without qualifications, and I think that they're both uh, important depend depending upon the position. So is there any other comment on that last bullet, make recommendations? Darcy? Um, I actually hadn't noticed the, that it included uh, appointment of town manager, too. Um, that wasn't included in the OCA charge. Um, so I'm not sure why it's included here. Are there any other comments? Yes, Sarah. So I just want to make an observation as someone who was on OCA and chaired briefly. We took a lot of time really thinking about process and, and what would be fair and how we could give the rest of the council enough information and, and confidence in what we did to be able to make up their minds. When we came back with some recommendations, something that Oka heard frequently was that, yes, you are going through a process and you are making recommendations, but remember, once a name has been put forward, then the rest of the council feels a certain amount of responsibility to not reject that person. So once a committee has made a recommendation, really they've made it for all of us. I don't necessarily think that that's true, and I believe what I said was, no, everybody has to really stand up for who they thought was right or to bring up questions about what happened with the process. But I think as far as trust goes for all of us together, I think that we really need to put ourselves in someone else's shoes. So if you were a counselor that really did feel like when OCA's process went through and then we brought you recommendations, many, many people were, they had a hard time with that and I understand it. And I think that all of us need to really listen when other people say, I think GOL is having a lot of power and you know, recommendations sometimes make it the rest of us feel like you know, we have to do something. I think we really just need to have empathy for each other on that because it isn't something, this was said to me a lot, it was, it's not something personal. It's, it's just sometimes all, every single one of us wants to feel like, you know, we had some input in something that was really important. Further comments on the last of that, those bullets? Alyssa. So did GOL t talk about what I believe Andy said, which was make recommendations to the town council on processes for appointment for the town clerk of the town council, the town manager, et cetera. I mean, I'd be totally fine with it saying processes for, and although I'm sure that was implied in some people's minds, was there something else to that that GOL discussed? And uh, Andy Joe. So uh, I'm the one that asked for this bullet point. So I, think I, I asked for it as a point of, I didn't think we should leave it out when there's clearly in the charter a point, the town council has these appointment authorities. And if we were distributing appointments, I was like, maybe we should include all appointments somewhere. That doesn't mean it has to go there, as I said. I think I, in proposing this, in my mind, it was implied that it would include a process. Uh, especially for something like town manager, um, if that one comes up. You know, keep in mind this bullet point has four different positions listed, not just one. It has the clerk of the council, it has additional staff as allowed by the charter, the town manager and an interim town manager, each of which are completely different um, and might require completely different processes or thought processes. One of the other things going through my mind was with the if referred was at least for a town manager, um, generally there's like a search committee of some sort that then brings multiple names as finalists to, I think that's how it's happened with the select board, the select board ended up with multiple finalists. There was something beforehand and then the select board interviewed, I think, like three finalists or two finalists and then voted on that. I, I had that kind of in mind when you could say, well, maybe GOL's 
part of that initial part, never thinking that GOL would end up with the one name recommended to the whole council. That was never an intention with this in my mind. Uh, Alyssa. So if I could just follow up on that. So that's not a search committee, it's a screening committee. People use that term a lot, and that implies we're going out and looking for people. We're not. It's a screening committee, and it was based on a profile that was written. And in order to function in an executive session, they had to bring forward multiple candidates. They couldn't bring forward one. And I absolutely disagree that any council committee would serve as that committee. I think that they would serve as the committee to recommend how that process would work. And then if we said, well, you know, you guys are sitting there, why don't we have you do it? That would be an option, but that would not be an option I would ever avail myself of. So I, I, that's why I'm focused on process. And I was very much thinking clerk of the council because I do think there should be a process for that. And I do like that it has a home here, but it should, I, I think we've perhaps had played short shrift to that process in the past in terms of our discussion of it. And so I'm totally happy to have a committee whose home it is to talk about process, but who is not making any of the decisions. They, they could recommend to us that they serve as the screening committee and we could say, no, but they could recommend it. Kathy? Um, I, I wanna add to, I think, what both Andy and Alyssa are saying. I, I, I could see if we were, hopefully never, um, talking about town manager, I think we'd have a lot of discussion on what the process would be and it could be any kind of combination of chairs of different committees, of bringing in people. So I don't think, again, this is, I wouldn't even think of delegating this to a committee off the bat, but I'd be totally comfortable with the notion of come up with a process, come up with option A, B, or C, you know, a way of proceeding here to help us get started with it. Um, I. I'm gonna step out of my role as president and just say, I just am so uncomfortable seeing this with any committee. It is not the job of a committee, it is the job of the council. And I do not feel that even if referred, I think the immediate thing we would do, at least in the case of a town manager or if needing an interim town manager, is create a committee of the council that may not be any one committee and just move on from there. I, this, is, <laughs> this is probably the most important job the council ever does, and that's hire its, its executive. So that's, <laughs> maybe I should step away, <laughs> but I, yeah. I, I just feel very strongly on that particular one. Andy? I just want to add that um, this is one of these things that I of the town never confronts. We did have to go through the process of uh, picking an interim town manager, and that was also a difficult process. And uh, we, uh, you know, it was, without going into great detail, one that involved its own process, its own, um, in a way, uh, you know, assistance. Um, and it was not one that could be done easily either. Um, it was uh, something that had to be given appropriate thought because it was important that the town be run well and be run in a manner that could be then handed off to the person who we would ultimately hire for the permanent job. And uh, so I don't want to give short shrift to the interim just because I've had the experience. Okay. Let's move on to the one last one on this one and then we'll um, take a break. Okay. Uh, the last one is propose revisions to general bylaws to improve clarity, consistency, and actionability. Kathy, you spoke to this first. Could you just give us briefly um, your point? The first bullet, I just before that one, I completely agree with that anything that we're, is before us for potential action gets reviewed for this. So to the extent the second bullet is needed, I would say upon referral by the council review, you know, because I, I think we shouldn't, uh, so the, the issue is if something comes up that there's a problem with the way that one of our bylaws is written, 
it should be brought to our attention rather than we shouldn't be just going and looking for it. So I, I like the idea that there's a home for, that it's come, come up to us. And so I think that's already covered in the first bullet, though, so I'm not sure I'm proposing an alternative to the second. But because okay. we just had this bylaw review committee that operated all year long rewording and consistency and cleaning them up. And so I think if there's a problem with them, it should be brought back to us, and then we should re understand it and refer it with some guidance, not just go reopen them again. So that, that was my question about the second bullet. I have no problem with the first. The, so the point is that it's only if referred, but in fact it's probably covered in the first bullet. I think yes. You know, I think that it's been brought up in some way to our attention that there's a problem with X, Y, or Z, would, and we'd like to change it or we'd like to fix it. Yeah. Okay. Evan? So it's not covered in the first bullet, and this bullet is needed, actually, um, and it's not an expansion of power. So I want to first clarify what I think is a misunderstanding. I think you're interpreting this bullet to mean that uh, GOL is going to become round three of the bylaw review committee, which... I don't think anyone on GOL wants to be, and I don't think that's anyone's intention. Um, but when we finally voted on those bylaws, on the revised general bylaws, we referred the future considerations document to GOL, and we said, deal with this, because there were a number of things in there that were substantive beyond the bylaw review committee, but really had to do with the actionability or the clarity or the consistency between bylaws of a document. And your ask of, by, of, of GOL was to deal with that document, which would involve proposing revisions. GOL can't actually do that under its charge right now. What was referred to GOL was proposed revisions to these bylaws that have been identified. Um, but we actually can't do that, because actually what we, write, we, we do right now under that first bullet is, is when something's proposed, is we look and we tell you whether or not it's clear, consistent, and actionable. But we cannot proactively come to the council and say about a wage theft bylaw, for example, oh, we want to revise it in this way, right? We don't have uh, the ability to propose revisions. And so um, this is necessary for us to actually be able to do what you asked us to do last meeting. And I don't think it's an expansion of power because you've already asked us to do this, right? And so this is just giving us the ability. Whether or not we add if referred, I think that's fine. I think that we, we could do that. Um, I don't think that it's necessary because I think there's a chance that in our course of work, we may discover a bylaw. Um, you know, let's say we're considering an existing bylaw and it's related to another one, we might consider, we might discover one and say, oh, you know, that's kind of wonky right there. We should recommend a proposal. And it's a little inefficient to have to come and say, we found this minor thing, it needs to be changed, but we can't propose revisions to it until you tell us to propose revisions to it. Um, but we can't actually do what you've asked us to do without this. Um, Lynn, I just want to respond because my understanding of what we referred to GOL, we were really specific. There were three or four bylaws. No, no, no. The future considerations document from bylaw when the bylaw review committee was referred to GOL, as well as the it's four like, bylaws. Oh, okay. the, the, the there are four bylaws and the future okay, considerations. Okay, the future consideration. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. But the others were very specific. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mandy Joe. I also, I, I agree with everything Evan said. I also want to point out sometimes there's a change in law that might require us to change our bylaws because our bylaws are no longer actionable because they now violate mass general law. It's more efficient for the town manager through KP law to say, hey, GOL, you're going to have to look at this because the law changed than for him to come to the council and say, you need to refer and do that. We're trying to shorten these meetings and be a little more efficient when it's something obvious because a law changed and mass general law changed and we have to reflect that change in our bylaws. It's, it doesn't give more power to GOL, but it makes the council more efficient to be able to just get it there to start with without putting it on our agenda first for that referral. Right. Um, I also want to speak to this particular thing because I think that getting the process for our zoning bylaws and our general bylaws down 
and understanding that is a challenge. Uh, it is something that I know that uh, Mandy Jo and GOL have been working on. Uh, I'm sorry? CRC. And CRC, thank you, on zoning. But then in addition to that, Mandy Jo's taken on the general bylaw schematic, uh, and which I asked her to do, and will come forth to the council. And one of the things, as I looked at the initial drafts, was, okay, how can we cut some steps out here? And also, at what point does it go to legal counsel, and what point doesn't it go to legal counsel? So that's a future discussion. But the issue of having a legislative, if you will, standing committee that looks at legislation is kind of a standard practice for a town council. And um, this is what that last bylaw, or that last bullet is about. Any further questions or discussion on that one? Do you want to take a break and then come back on this? Yeah. All right, let's look at TSO and then I guess we're gonna look at it. Okay, then we'll take a break. TSO. This is a new committee. However, I want to point out that um, 15 months ago, God forbid, um, this is one of the types of committees I wrestled with when I started looking around and saying, what do towns and cities have? So it's not uh, a new subject. <laughs> yes, Sarah. So in looking at this charge, I actually really feel like <laughs> of all of these things, I guess you could say there's m two, maybe three things on here that are actually actionable charges that a committee could do, which would be to review and make recommendations to the town council appointments of uh, department heads and multi-member bodies, um, which right now would definitely wouldn't take a lot of time because OCA has made um, already, when talking with the town manager, a form in which to follow and also information. So that it's, and basically then we just say, yes, you did, did a great job, no problem. So there's not a lot of discussion there. Um, and then of course we are the keeper of the public way so we could review and make recommendations to town council on measures related to the public way. And then the only other one that I can really think that we could do is if we had, if this committee or some committee had a relationship with say UTAC. But I, I don't know, town, I don't see unless five members of this committee were actually meeting like town gown style um, with the colleges that we really had any real say in, in that. When it comes to outreach and communication, town council doesn't have that role. I mean, OCA, we even had a subcommittee to make sure we could get up and running on this. And um, the community participation officers told us that they had their job and they, they really did not need us. It would muddy the waters and there wasn't a relationship for us to have with them. RAC said we work for the town manager. We don't, we don't do things the way you do and, and we're not related to you in any way. Our subcommittee then tried to think of how we could help all of the counselors work together and we came up with that. George and, and Darcy and I, you know, came up with the whole thing that we sent out to you, the poll, and what are you doing? And, and you know, how could we make this go smoother? And how could we all tell each other, like, what we do so that we could make our communications better? I will even tell you that I didn't fill out the poll until my arm got twisted behind my back. I just, I do not think that, that any committee, I do not think town council has anything to do with outreach and community it, it, relations in this sense. Um, and then I'm confused about some of the things to review and make recommendations to the town council on measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department, and then advise the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. We are legislative. We are not executive. We, have, we cannot say anything to staff, nor can we make really 
any strong recommendations to staff to do this or that. The only way that I can see that this would work is if this particular committee had, you know, uh, an open line of communication to the department heads and to the town manager. And then perhaps if they had, if, you know, people came and brought us things that they really wanted to see done, then we could make a priority list. And then I would think that the only way to really have this be actionable is if then the committee had certain goals that they could then write into the review of department heads and to the town manager. It'd be the only way to really see if this was working. And I, I don't know that, I struggle with this because I think that maybe we don't, I don't know that we even need this committee. I think we could take the two or three things that this committee would do and siphon them off to another committee and not really be adding a lot of time. And that's just my reading. Okay. Yes. Mandy, Joe. So transportation can take a lot of time. Public ways can take a lot of time. It is, the CRC has two referrals sitting in front of it that deal with transportation and public ways that it hasn't been able to fit on its agenda for months. Um, so moving it back to CRC it's going to, CRC is going to have to start meeting weekly if it comes back to, into the CRC fold. But I want to address the other two. Um, the third bullet point in outreach and communi community relations is advise and make recommendations to the town council regarding town council participation in community events. That's envisioned like the block party, like the first day celebration. Are we going to participate? If so, what is our participation going to look like? Someone on the council needs to take control of that and it sits nowhere right now. So that is something we as a council need to figure out how we're going to do and putting it into this town services and outreach body would allow us to do that and would have a place again for that conversation and that decision making. Um, measures that may affect the provision of services to the community by a town department. We will actually be hearing about measures this evening that affect the provision of services in the wage theft bylaw that is item H that three counselors have been working on because that actually requires some town services department, some town departments to do some stuff. Um, and that is a legislation, it's a bylaw that affects town departments and provision of services. Another one that is in process by myself and um, two other counselors is a surveillance bylaw that requires town services to not buy any equipment that has surveillance capability unless the council approves it. That's the provision of services to the community by a town department that is a bylaw, a measure, that this council should probably have a place to talk about when it comes in front of the council as I intend to propose it along with my fellow counselors that I've been working on. Um, in the next couple months, hopefully sooner. You know, there are, we, we are a legislative body, you're right, but our legislation can affect town services and can affect town departments because we can write a bylaw that says you got to do this or you can't do that. And we should have a committee that can look at that and then investigate it and make a recommendation to it. Other comments? Darcy. I, I think it, uh, you know, having this committee makes a lot of sense, and I remember that you proposed it at the outset. Um, Something. Like um, yeah. But I think that the um, the amount of work that this committee could have just in the first three bullets of town services could fill up its um, schedule completely. And you know, I feel like it's. I was. The, you know, I, I feel like I am the lone vote uh, against dissolving OCA, but I see with, uh, you know, these three charges, the amount of work that's added to each one of these committees by adding in the OCA tasks is a lot. Um, and I'm not sure that that is actually helpful in making us run more efficiently because we're actually loading down these committees with these extra tasks that OCA is already trained to do. Um, so um, it makes a lot of sense to me. 
for for this committee to be to be working on this stuff and in particular the first three bullets uh, Andy so I have some concerns, but I want to start out by saying that I think that the creation of the committee is um, a, a sound proposal, and uh, one of the things that was made as a very strong point is that uh, in order to give counselors an opportunity to share in some of the larger questions that we're facing that it, it does make sense to divide CRC's responsibilities in some manner. Um, and this, on the whole, seems logical. Now, with that said, I'm a little uncomfortable going forward tonight and acting on the draft charge as presented. I really think it needs more thought. Um, one of the things that uh, we have to um, always know is that um, Finance is dealing with town services too because it's dealing with what it is that the manager proposes to fund and whether um, the funding seems adequate to the task that we have um, described to us for that particular department's functions. And uh, those kinds of issues um, kind of deal with um, a place where TSO and finance need to coordinate and work together well. Um, the other thing that I was considering is, is that um, we do need to be very careful about, um, and this has been referenced earlier, the relationship between the executive and legislative branches of government. And uh, within that piece, um, in article, I think it's 6.1, the question of um, departmental reorganization is very explicitly set forth in the charter and is not referenced in this charge or incorporated into this charge. So um, I'm uh, fine with continuing on the quest of trying to develop a charge, but I would think to do it tonight would not be a sound thing to do. Um, Kathy. Um, I'm trying not to duplicate anything. So on, on, I think Sarah's point was trying to make sure that this committee has some real authority and areas of responsibility. So one of the places I found it, where would this go? Um, under transportation, I think if we explicitly said parking, um, it's a big issue. So transportation could encompass parking, and I don't think we should later on have to say this part of parking goes to CRC or TSO, but what is our permitting policy? What, how long are the meters open? Should they end at 6 o'clock at night? What do we charge? Um, is a set of policies. So uh, this is where I didn't, um, I'm not ready to say what I think specifically should would be, is it on referral review proposed changes? Because I think in some cases, we might want to have the council say we think there should be ch some changes in policies um, that we have um, some governance over. So this is um, how I would word that. So would we just be in response to something that comes to them? So suppose some councilors got together and came up with a new parking policy. Which committee would we go to? And I think TSO would be the logical one if we put parking. I just want the word parking in it somewhere. Okay. Yeah. Evan. Yeah, I'd love to respond to that because since, uh, since GOL started talking about this again on November 20th, um, this question has come up a few times about whether or not to actually write the word parking in there. And the reason why it's not in there is actually a, a deliberate decision. Um, and it's that... TSO should weigh in when it has to do with parking that's part of the public way. So regulation of public ways is a TSO thing. So what you're talking about, parking meter times, regulations, that's all part of our regulation of public ways. That goes into TSO. Um, but just saying parking, well, that could actually lead us astray on a few issues. And so, for example, um, if we are looking at potentially rezoning a parcel in town for a private parking garage, that's parking, but it's actually a CRC thing because it's about uh, rezoning. And there's a lot of conversations about um, 
shared parking agreements and private parking. And that's really sort of a long-term planning thing that, that might belong more in CRC. And if we're talking about how we use funds in the Transportation Enterprise Fund, well, that actually probably belongs more in finance than it belongs in TSO, but it's technically a, a parking question. And so um, I think the concern was we really want to narrow the scope to saying this has to do with anything that's parking when it's in the public way, but there might be parking situations that make sense to go elsewhere. Um, and so this has been a conversation we've had. And I, I understand the, the, the desire for clarity, but I also worry that this is the, park, the public ways committee, not necessarily the parking committee, because parking touches so many different things. Okay. Alyssa. So um, following up on just the little parking part, um, I'm not sure why including transportation is in parentheses, but not and parking in the public way is included in parentheses. That, I, I hear what you're saying, but I think following on what Kathy's saying, maybe that's a way to combine that. Um, my question is, maybe that's I've read your report, and, um, but I'm still trying to understand, and maybe I just missed it somewhere. So I think part of what my problem was with reading the TSO charge was my eyes were just glazing over. I'm like, I don't even know what that stuff means. And so now I'm getting a better sense of what you were trying to get at by town services. Um, and, and I just didn't grasp that before. But speaking specifically about surveillance equipment and wage theft, which we both know are very hot topics, I wonder if GOL could, or could speak about why those aren't GOL items. Because to me, they're, they've become the experts on what's actionable, what's clear, what's consistent. Anything bylaw related is gonna come out of GOL. So I don't know, I don't understand what TSO can add to that that GOL can't do on their own. Mandy Jo. So there's a review for clarity, consistency, and actionability, but then there's also, in theory, a review for, is it a good idea? Um, and I'm, I'm using that phrase, but, but as CRC has adopted its own policy on reviewing measures, it, it, when a measure comes to CRC, um, we didn't adopt it in time for the percent for art, but we looked at, hey, we were tasked with looking at percent for art to make a recommendation to the council on whether to adopt that bylaw, not whether it was clear, consistent, and actionable. And so that committee, and so then wage theft uh, others, if the council wants it, would look at a committee referred to, GOL can't look at that bylaw for, is it good to adopt? It's just whether it's legal to adopt because the GOL charge as written is not a substantive looking at the substantive pros, cons, is this something we should do? It's just a looking at it of is it actionable and can we do it, not should we do it? CRC for Percent for Art was looking at, well, what are the effects if this is adopted? you know, what are the effects on, you know, social justice issues or, you know, art in general, um, you know, random things like that, the economic vitality of downtown, life, you know, quality. Quality, quality of life, all those things. And then based on that consideration makes a recommendation, yes or no, we think this bylaw should be passed. Maybe no, we don't think that bylaw should be passed. GOLs, as you've noticed, GOL on all of these, they're, there is not a recommendation. It is they voted to declare it clear, consistent, and actionable. So that's why those don't belong in GOL unless this body wants to give GOL that review authority on all bylaws versus non-bylaw measures. I don't think so. Phrase it correctly, just like I didn't understand the words at the beginning of the thing. But I understand that that's GOL's role now. And I understand what got brought up what feels like hours ago associated with the future considerations item and like how is GOL going to be able to do the future considerations thing um, without just talking about whether or not it's actionable. And that's why I'm wondering, this feels a little bit like, it just feels weird to me. It feels like GOL is well placed to have that conversation as opposed to splitting it off to TSO because you're still going to have to look at whether or not it's actionable, consistent, and clear. So why not expand their role in that area? And so rather than having TSO, why not expand GOL's role in that? And so just maybe that wasn't covered and I'm sorry I didn't ask the question the right way. Okay. Uh, uh, 
Dorothy. Did you have a further clarification on that one? GOL, no. I, I think we didn't necessarily consider that because we have heard feedback from this council for nearly a year that this council was not receptive to that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Dorothy. So uh, if GOL tells us what it is and CRC says it's a good idea or it's a bad idea, then does TSA, TSO say how do we do it? What town agencies? Is that the question? Yes. Okay. Yes. D a Sarah. So that's just, I guess, my confusion, and I think I'm with Alyssa. I think the more that we talk about it or are given examples, it makes more sense. But the thing that kind of just also just feels a little bit weird to me is that how Andy said there are certain things that are finance committee. I feel like a lot of these things actually do fit in other committees, and in, in that way it does feel like busy work to me or taking something away from a committee that actually has more knowledge about it. So I'm not... I'm getting more of an idea of what this means, but I, I still. Okay. Uh, so what, let me. As much as I, I actually want this issue to be resolved one way or another, because many of you have been sitting here saying, you know, I'd like to serve on a different committee. But what I believe that GOL has done is stand back and say, of our committees, what ha aren't we doing? What haven't we covered? And they've come up with a different way to shuffle the deck. None of this should be taken personally. And I think that's very, very hard. And I really wanna say, I am extremely happy and proud of the work that every committee has done for the last year plus. And we've made great strides as a council, but we always said we want to step back and look at how we've organized our committees. Now, being the person who first put the ideas of committees out, which I often have to do, and then be willing to be shot at on a regular basis, um, I think this has been a very healthy discussion. And I think what it's pointed out is that maybe some things aren't as clearly understood. But I do want to go back to the fact that even 15 months ago, when we started proposing committees, I wrestled with the issue of town services. And it never ended up anywhere. I wrestled with the issue of outreach and OCA work to address it, and it's not been, it's been frustrating. The other thing I just want to say, everybody has developed skills and talents in the process of their committee work. We all bring those skills and talents. We've listened to each other, and the process of one committee does not belong to an individual. It belongs to the council. So those processes are well worked through and will, I am sure, be respected no matter how we decide to shuffle the deck on our committees. So I would like to suggest we take a break <laughs> because if we don't, I think we're going to start having people just get up and leave uh, to go to the restroom, okay? So we're going to uh, reconvene in 10 minutes. Okay. All right, while um, we were um, taking our modest break. Um, there's been some attempt to look at the various charges and see if we can at least continue to move forward. So I'm going to, I guess, uh, Athena, you have them? Is that, is it, Athena, are you in charge of what's up on the screen? Okay, thank you. So uh, do you wanna show us the actual changes No, it's, this is only going to be on the screen. It won't be in your packet. It's just... There we go. And now could you enlarge it for those of us that are getting older? Some people don't age. Some people do. Okay. 
So what you have done is you've split out Town Finance Committee, at the non-voting members. You have added to that other bullet, if referred by the council, and you have added to the next bullet the process for appointments. Okay. Are there other discussions about this one? Okay, then let's go on to, yes, Darcy. Are we going to talk about all of them in a row? Uh, um, um, I'm just stating that I, I don't think I could vote for this because of the bullet about um, council liaisons, joint capital planning committee, because I believe that we should just take that one out. Um, rather than adding the phrase if referred by the council because okay. it's, un, it's not needed. Um, and I, I just think that we'll end up referring it if we have that phrase there. And I don't want it referred. Other comments on this one? Um, yes, Kathy. I, I raised the original concern, and I agree with Darcy. What I was trying to do is get delete it. Um, and I, I will repeat um, the tension it could cause in the council if we were in a situation that were four or five people that wanted for two slots, and a subgroup is making choices among them, including often among themselves wanting it. I, I think we don't want to set up that dynamic. And there are 13 of us. We can deal. We don't have very many of these where we're appointing ourselves. So I think it's pretty easy to do. We do a quick voting and rank voting if there are three slots. It's not complicated. And that's why we wrote the rule. It is a rule. It's 10.6 of the council rules of procedure right now. We set it up to be pretty simple. So I think it's till it's failing us oh, we shouldn't open up the possibility that we're going to do it in a different way. I just don't see any need for this wording. Are there other just comments on this one? Yes, Evan. Yeah, so we just closed a conversation on liaisons, and there seemed to be somewhat broad agreement, if I'm interpreting not incorrectly, uh, that the uh, committees that should have liaisons should be reviewed every year. Uh, this is the bullet that would allow GOL to do that. Um, and so uh, I think one of the things that I think we need to be better at as a council um, is, and I think we're moving there, is having more specific referrals, um, by which I mean we used to just go, eh, refer that to GOL, refer that to CRC. And I think we're moving to a point where we're saying, we're referring, here's the time limit, and here's what we want back. And I think that keeping things in the charge broad, but keeping our referral specific would be useful. So for instance, maybe our referral to GOL would be, to give us some recommendations about which committee should have liaisons, but we're not referring to them who, do, who those liaisons should be. Or, or maybe we're referring to them a process for appointing JCPC counselors because we feel as though the process we've been using hasn't worked. But we can specify in the referrals, but still keep the authority there because the council is still the gatekeeper. So I want to add to what you just said, Evan, and say that I also believe that um, we agreed I was going to send out one of my polls and um, come back with a recommendation without referral. Is that correct? So this allows referral, but it doesn't require referral. Is that how I'm reading that? And we're pointing out that it's for one year, or, and, well, for less than that even. Um, the, I, I'll speak to the next one since I was very clear about how uncomfortable I am with it. I'm still uncomfortable, uh, but I also don't foresee 
the problem. And it says if referred by the council. And I have to say that should any of these particular situations arise, um, as uh, well, I'm president, we'd bring it to the council for discussion and make a decision as to whether or not we're going to form an ad hoc committee rather than refer. Yes, Alyssa. If I could just follow up on that, I think I understand the level of discomfort and I'm gonna have really strong opinions about any of such processes, but again, if referred by the council, I would think that if it comes up, we should sit here at the town council and say, our choices are to come up with an ad hoc committee mm -hmm. with me just asking random people if they wanna do it, or we could try first to refer it to this body, right. let this body come up with a process that may just be, you know what, I think you, the president should just put it out a poll, or it could be something that they thought more about, mm -hmm. because I would actually rather see it owned by a committee to have, to be, feel like they might be responsible for processes, <coughs> rather than on the fly sitting here saying, oh, let's create an ad hoc committee that's just gonna go create this out of whole cloth. I, I like the idea of a home as long as it's if referred. Well, there's another possibility, and that is you do something like I just spent the last two weeks doing and getting ready to do vacancies, and you put together a process and you bring it to the council and they decide you should continue to nurse it along. So there's, it, it's more than just cut and dry making, you know, in other words, make a council decision on the fly versus refer. There's other options in between, so I'm, I'm not as opposed to it as I felt I was in the past. Yes, Darcy. Um, if if uh, we're talking in that the, the previous bullet point, make recommendations regarding appointments by the town council for non-voting council liaisons, if we're not talking about this committee making a, recommending specific people to be appointed counselors, uh, and we're just talking about the process, why don't we add that to that bullet also uh, regarding the process of, of appointments? Because isn't that what, what, that was what Evan was just suggesting, that it would be the, that we would be uh, looking at reviewing um, council liaisons on an annual basis and so on, that's one thing. That's different from the, the uh, committee recommending specific counselors as liaisons. Mandy Jo. So the word regarding is very broad, so it would include potentially a process. It would include potentially the actual recommendation on who. Um, it could also include what liaisons there are. Um, you know, it, it is broad enough to include all of that. Again, when Evan says, you know, we want the charges broad and the referrals specific, that's what this does. Um, I, I remind the council, we were kind of already talking earlier in this meeting that OCA would be back and be doing the, potentially be doing the ones doing the polling on liaisons. We've mentioned that at a couple of meetings where it was, we're gonna get the list of committees and then OCA's gonna do the polling and see who's interested and no one was having a problem with that. And this is just moving it to GOL. Um, but you know, okay, maybe no, no one had mentioned having a problem with that yet, despite having been mentioned at multiple meetings. So this is just moving that to GOL, I do want to point out that I don't actually believe this conflicts with Rule 10.6, I believe it is, um, that says the council has to vote after polling. There's still going to be polling. That, that can be polling somewhere. That poll can be referred to committee. It can not be referred to committee. And the council is still going to be the one to vote. So this charge in no way conflicts with the rule. Further questions or comments? Yes, Shalini. So I, I like the way we've been working so far with the polling, um, but this seems like we can, we're still gonna keep doing that unless we need to refer it. So there's always that choice. And we can always vote not to 
refer it, like the discussion we're having now would happen then, but it just, it just gives us an option that if need be, we can refer it. So that's why I'm, I'm okay with the change as long as it's got the if referred by the council. All right, any further discussion on this one? Sure. I guess the question is, are we ready, ready for a motion? On this one, yes. Well, it's going to be a full motion. It's a, it's a group. GOL brought this together as a total group. So you can separate the motion or you can make it the way it's I'm, there. I'm going to make a motion. I think that we... It, it will be slightly different than what's printed because of the amendments here. To I move to rescind the current Community Resources Committee and Governance Organization and Legislation Committee charges, effective immediately. Adopt the proposed Town Services and Outreach and Community Resources Committee charges as amended at the February 12th, 2020 Governance Organization and Legislation Committee meeting, effective immediately, except for the appointment responsibility for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals in the Community Resources charge. Adopt the proposed governance organization and legislation committee charge as amended on February 24th, 2020 at the town council meeting effective immediately and rescind all duties in the outreach communications and appointments committee charge except for making recommendations regarding appointments to planning board and zoning board of appeals Appointment responsibility for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals shall remain in outreach communications and appointments until July 1, 2020, at which time the appointments responsibility for those bodies shall shift to the Community Resources Committee as provided in the charge and, and outreach communications and appointments committee shall be dissolved. Second. Thank you. Further discussion? Alyssa. Beyond the fact that I'm not sure we're done with TSO, um, is that this does none of that motion as printed, nor that I heard, reflects the changes we're making tonight. Uh, that reflected the change that was made at GOL. No. No, it, it, the additional. It said 21220. Where is, where did we insert I, it? I got rid of GOL in that, large, that line and inserted an entire phrase that said adopt the GOL charge as amended on. February 24th, 2020, at the council meeting, effective immediately. And you took out the part about the 21220? Yes. GO, that was the substitution. Yes. Does that motion say we're accepting TSO as written? Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. Is there further discussion? And if somebody wants to bring up TSO, then now's the time to do that. Sarah. Oh, I'm going to vote against it simply because of the reasons. I don't want to be redundant simply because of the reasons that I brought up about my initial feelings about that committee. Okay. Further discussion? I'm sorry. George? I think this is really an important vote. Um, we really need to get to work. Um, with our committees, and I think we need to start making appointments. Um, and I'm afraid we're letting the perfect become the enemy of the good. Um, the proposals here could be wordsmithed to death. We could take this and move that, and right? But the underlying purpose still remains to try and create a services, a town services committee that I think is badly needed. Um, when people come to me and talk to me, it's usually about some issue or problem they have with town services. And I mean, I, I go to Paul or whatever, but I think this is something that we as a legislative body, it's desperately needed. We also need to take the workload off of CRC. Um, and I think the idea of sharing out appointments um, makes sense. It's not perfect, but if we spend the next two, three, four meetings trying to get this to be absolutely letter perfect, we will, we will get nowhere. So I'm imploring my fellow counselors to really think hard about whether the objections that you have are so fundamental 
that we can't make what I think is a really important change. This will all be reviewed in December, and we will look at it, and maybe you'll all point to me and say, you, you fool, this, you, you, you let us down a path, right? But I, I don't think so. Um, but we need to um, move forward. And to, if you send TSO back to my committee, I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with it. As a matter of fact, I'm probably going to bring it back in the form that it's in. So we need to decide. We don't want it. If you don't want it, fine. Say that, and then we're, we're done. But I think it's desperately needed. This is our chance to do it. Um, we will review it all in December. Um, don't let the perfect become the enemy of the good. Alyssa. And, and I hear that, and so I'm willing to try and make some compromise tonight rather than separating out TSO and having us vote on the others, which would be one alternative. Um, until we hear support for that. But I, the, the deal breaker that's really hard for me, even though there's actually several things I don't really like in here, but the deal breaker for me is bullet two. Advise the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. That is so broad. That is beyond any kitchen sink. I don't, it doesn't matter what you intended it to mean. The words say that. And so I, as a resident, say, I really don't like the way the sidewalk's been repaired in front of my house. Oh, TSO has to come up with a proposal to advise the town council on how to fix the sidewalk in front of my house. That makes no sense to me. So if that wasn't in there, I get the part about review and make recommendations when it's measures, like it's a measure that you're saying, okay, we've heard enough about some particular thing, we need to bring something to the council. But to say, on matters, really, I, the person was rude to me at such and such counter, like that's not a complaint that comes to this committee. I'm just really worried that I don't think that's a workable bullet and I feel like we're opening ourselves up to people coming in and saying, I'm unhappy about a particular service and us going, thank you for sharing that. We're just telling the town manager because all the staff is his job. So I, I, I get the part about the surveillance and that kind of thing. I just don't see how bullet two fits. Would you like to make a motion that affects TSO? I would like to remove the second bullet that advises the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. Is there a second? second. Okay. So um, that motion is, at this point, the motion we're dealing with, and then we'll come back to the full motion. So the motion is to remove from the TSO charge Advise the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. Discussion? Kathy? One, there was one other proposed change Eliza made earlier that on TSO, the third bullet, that where it says including transportation, she said and parking policy. So it would be clear that that word, it referred to the public ways. Do you, yeah, I think the goal here is to give the so there's a, a friendly some, amendment? Yeah, yes. something in there that it's clear okay. that it's parking in the public way that we're Thank talking you. about. But public way precedes it. And it's a separate bullet point. I, I recommend taking one motion at a time. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so let's stick to the first one. The motion is to remove the phrase, advise the town council on matters related to the operation of town government. Is there any further discussion? Dorothy? I, I would uh, agree with that motion because it is so general that it doesn't actually mean anything. And if there's something that needs to be brought up, it will be brought up by that t the new TSO committee and the town council will discuss it. So I don't think we lose anything by getting rid of it and we avoid a future complication. Mandy, Mandy Joe. If it needs to be brought up and we remove this bullet point, TSO cannot bring it up. So if you get rid of the bullet point and there's, as you, Dorothy, as you just said, if something needs to be brought up, TSO will bring it up. Well, it won't be able to without that bullet point there because without that bullet point, the only thing it can do is act and make recommendations on actual measures. So if there's something it sees as problematic, you need that second bullet point in there to bring it up. Dorothy. I, that's an awfully formalistic thing. I mean that someone will bring it up, whether it's a formal being brought up as by a committee or by a member of the committee or by a member of the town council, we bring things up, we talk about things. Everything doesn't have to come formally through a committee in a formal structure. Um, and it, 
it, it doesn't say that it has to. It just says this is where it can go. I would like to be able to tell my constituents sometimes, especially if I get the same complaint over and over again, that this is something we can bring to or someone can bring to this committee. So I, I interpret in that sense. Um, it's just... A, a, a Andy. Yeah, I'm going to vote for the motion to remove the bullet because I'm really concerned about the structure of our charter and the distinction between the roles of the legislative and executive. And I don't think we have sufficient clarity here about what that role is. Second and related to that is that we, as a council, evaluate the town manager on an annual basis. And uh, if, um, as counselors, we've alerted the manager that we've been hearing um, problems and uh, we're not satisfied with the response, then it seems that's the appropriate time to go about it. But to invest it in the committee and to give a committee an unclear role that is um, not clearly in con Consistent with the charter makes me very uncomfortable. Further comment, Mandy Jo. Sorry, Charter Section 2.8, Investigations and Access to Information. Investigations, the town council may investigate the fares of the town and the conduct or performance of any town agency except those agencies under the jurisdiction of the school committee, regional school committee, or library trustees. Requests for information must comply with the following sections. This bullet point gives a home to where to do those investigations if we want to do those investigations without it being figured out in a council meeting or being done by the full council. The bullet point gives a home to the charter section that specifically allows us to do those investigations. Could, you, could we add the charter section? As we have done below for a point of clarity. The motion on the table is to remove the whole thing. We couldn't add it if we're voting Thank on you. a motion to remove. Right. Okay. There's a motion on the table to remove. It's been made and seconded. Is there any further comment? Okay, then, yes. All those in favor? Oh, Shalini, go ahead. I am too. All those in favor, raise your hand. This is the saying yes means we're remo removing that bullet. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Remove. To remove. Opposed? Do you have everybody, sh Athena? And abstain. Opposed, please raise your hands. So the motion passed seven to six. Okay. Is there any other statements about uh, TSL? I just don't know whether it's a statement, but there was the adding the words about and parking policy with the including transportation. Okay. It's a motion made and seconded. Second, please. Second. Okay. Any further comment on that one? Evan? So, so you said parking policy. Alyssa, earlier you said parking in the public way. That I would vote for that. I will not vote for parking policy. Okay. So tell me exactly what it is you're saying. Okay. I, okay. The paren says related to public way. Ways. Comma, including transportation and parking. So it's relating it to public ways. 
You could say including transportation and parking, because it said related to public okay. ways. So and like, parking. Yep. That's all. That's right. Okay. The, the motion is to add in the parens and parking. Is there any, it's been made, it's been seconded. I, did I have a second? Yes, okay, thank you. Any further discussion on this? Shalini? So what I heard Evan say earlier was that, which made sense to me is that if the parking issue is related to a garage or something, then that belongs more in finance and CRC versus over here. So just a broad parking right. statement would be would not be appropriate for this. Correct. It's public ways. Okay, so as long as it's related to public. Okay. Yeah. Any further discussion on that? Call the question. All those in favor mm -hmm. of adding and parking into that parens, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we're now back to the original motion. Is there any other tinkering anybody wants to do? It passed, seven to six, seven to six, thank you. For the purposes of the public. We're back to the original motion. The original motion, do you wanna read it please? Sure. To rescind the current Community Resources Committee and Governance, Organization, and Legislation Committee charges effective immediately. Adopt the proposed Town Services and Outreach and Community Resources Committee charges as amended and effective immediately, except for the appointment responsibility for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals and the Community Resources Committee charge. Adopt the Governance, Organization, and Legislation Committee charge as amended on 2-24-2020 at the Town Council meeting, effective immediately, and rescind all duties in the Outreach, Communication, and Appointments Committee charge, except for making recommendations regarding appointments to Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals. Appointment responsibilities for Planning Board and Zoning Board of Appeals shall remain in Outreach, Communications, and Appointments until July 1, 2020, at which time the appointments responsibility for those bodies shall shift to Community Resources Committee as provided in the charge and outreach communications and appointments shall be dissolved. I missed the, the two amendments, so I can fit those in. Okay, is, Mandy Joe, you made the original amendment, is that? I made the original motion and Evan seconded it. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm and, Andy. And those, those, that motion has now been amended, the charges referenced in those motions have now been amended. Right. Yeah, Andy. my concern is, is that we haven't talked about GOL's committee charge again in this uh, follow-up to try and get to a final result, and I had an issue with the GOL charge, so therefore I can't support oh. this um, because, you know, to be very specific about what it is, um, I said earlier that I would like to get the Finance Committee an opportunity to discuss. I'm willing to give up on that, but I would like to have something in there about non-voting, uh, make recommendations to the Town Council regarding appointment by the Town Council for, and I'll skip to non-voting Finance Committee members with appropriate participation by the Finance Committee so that the Finance Committee has to be consulted in the interview process. Okay, so the, there's a motion, there is a revision up here, and we have not adopted this. We did adopt it? No, we did not. So Andy wanted to, we separated out Finance Committee above, okay, in the, all make recommendations to the town council regarding appointments by the town council for non-voting finance committee members. Okay, do you want to amend that? Yes, to add 
uh, the words in consultation with the finance committee. And I'm going to stop there because that's the amendment first. And then um, if it's seconded, I will uh, speak to it because it's a very limited piece. Okay. Is the, mo the motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second it. Dorothy, okay. Okay. Um, what I am re re really referencing is that the recommendation decision remains in GOL. That's not... Um, part of what is suggested by the amendment. But in the last round, there was no ability of the uh, Finance Committee to have even a single representative involved with the interview process and to make comments to the committee that was making the recommendation to the council. And um, this is a way of remedying that piece, but still leaving the final decision um, within a committee um, that is designated for it. The motion's been made and seconded. Pat? Well, I would like to hear from OCA because that's not my memory, but I'm hazy about it. Um, and I think that we need people. Um, Sarah? So I, what we did is what we did for finance committee is what we did for ZBA and planning board, which is to speak to the chair and ask the chair for input on what they were seeking in people and what qualifications. And we took everything that the chair said um, in account when we were choosing someone and we were very clear to make it known what the chair of finance committee had said. Um, finance did come to uh, OCA several times, uh, three or four meetings um, with one or two people, and it really made it clear to us what they were looking for. Um, and we, we definitely took that into account. I think that we, the only thing that we did was that we had made the decision that a chair of a committee could not be part of the actual interview process because we did not feel that it was correct for a chair to actually be picking their own members. So that's what, what we did. I think that's correct, right? And so that's how we came down on it. So I would have no problem with the chair again, you know, if GOL talked to the chair, asked the chair what they're seeking in members, I would say that, you know, that was, OCA had said they didn't want a chair as part of the, or of the interview process. We didn't do that for any other of our recommendations. So that's. Andy Joe. So I can't support the amendment because it says in consultation with the whole committee. The whole committee includes the non-voting members and if they've applied for reappointment, you have to consult them on whether they should be reappointed. That to me doesn't make any sense. So I can't support the amendment. Andy. That could be remedied by saying uh, council members of the finance committee. Um, the uh, summary that was given of the process, I agree with, um, but actually um, I think OCA has made some significant strides in the appointment process since then, as was evident in the last planning board appointment, where there was public interviews in which all counselors could attend. And um, I think that we were moving in a direction that was Opening up, opening up the process some. I didn't want to get really explicit about what the process should be because I didn't think that that was uh, appropriate for the charge. Um, but I uh, wanted to do something that moves it in the direction that we went with the planning board appointments and OCA's very good improvements there. And that's not what you're saying, what you said before, Andy. What you said is you wanted to be consulted, that you wanted to be part of the a process directly sitting uh, and making the recommendation. And my memory, uh, and which isn't always great, but <laughs> my memory of there was um, a person that, who got recommended that you didn't want 
as a non-resident voting member, or resident um, non-voting member. And that happened again with planning, where somebody got recommended and there were people who felt like it wasn't a good decision. Bringing your opinions about the decisions is very important, but because you lost doesn't mean that you should change the whole process uh, to fit you better. Um, Andy? Well, first of all, that's not true about the Finance Committee. Um, I said that I wanted to talk with one of the persons who was um, recommended just to ask a question and uh, never had the opportunity until afterwards, but the question was satisfactorily answered um, eventually anyway, and, uh, but there was never opposition to, any, to the appointment um, as uh, to, to the individual, and it was really a process question, and it sort of got sidestepped because uh, the conversation never took place. So I do take exception to that statement. Um, I do think that it's a um, sufficiently open um, because ultimately it gives the responsibility to GOL. It does not give responsibility. Uh, the extent of the participation is, all, is going to be a decision, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is going to be a decision of GOL um, but that um, at least that there has to be some conversation. As I said, um, I would do a friendly amendment in consultation with the council members of the Finance Committee if that addresses part of the question. I, I need a point of clarification. When you are saying in consultation, are you saying to be part of the interviews? Are you saying as has been done in the past? Well, it's hard to decide, say what's been done in the past because OCA has been trying to revise its process and improve right. its process. Um, and uh, so it's, I think that the process uh, is ultimately, the decision as to how this goes forward is left with GOL. Uh, the um, amendment is simply to say, Talk to the finance. Talk to the council members of the finance committee. Uh, okay. So first of all, there's been, I'm sorry, there's been a, an amendment or a suggestion of an amendment, of, to, with the council members, of the finance committee. Okay. Uh, and the person who made the motion, do they accept this? Yeah, I was with. Andy made so the motion, to Dorothy. and Dorothy, do you accept it? Yeah. Thank you. Evan. Thank you. And so first of all, I want to thank Sarah for correcting the record on finance committee's involvement. And I want to add two things. She mentioned that members of finance were consulted, that two members of finance sat in on one of our meetings and were treated almost as if they were members of the committee, giving us full feedback. We also finance developed the committee handout. They wrote that, that was sent to all interviewees. And we allowed Finance Committee to draft interview questions that we then tried to modify. And so Finance Committee was integrated into the process more than any other committee has been at the time and since. Uh, so so I thank you, Sarah, for correcting that, because that was a gross misrepresentation of the process. One thing I want to say um, with regard to OCA and its process. Um, so o OCA, if the motion passes, will be dissolved um, at the end of June. And appointments authority will go to GOL for this, to TSO for some, and for CRC to some. OCA has spent a really long time working on the process that we just used for planning board. And it's my sincere hope that the committees that inherit those appointments will also take on board that process. I hope that, that they won't try and reinvent the wheel. One part of that process that OCA has been adopted, which I hope will be adopted, is Section 4B, which says prior to the adoption of selection guidance, the OCA chair, in this case whatever body chair, shall solicit from the chair of the body to be appointed the following and a bunch of things. And so part of built into this process is that the chair of the appointed, the body that's charged with this actually reaches out to the chair and says, 
we're seeking your input on this vacancy. We're seeking your input on what you need, what you're looking for. And of course, the chair could just give their own opinion, but the expectation is the chair will also consult the rest of the body. And so I, I'm voting against this motion um, in part because I find it superfluous. It's, it's built into the process at play, and, and it keeps being referenced that OCA has revised this process, but this was actually a carryover for the previous process. This isn't new. This is something we did before. It's something we did again. It's something that w that's worked, and it's already in there. And so this, mo th this additional language is unnecessary. Um, Evan, I just want to ask something. The process that OCA uses, as I recall, was never adopted by the council? Correct. No, it's a committee process. So each, each committee, committee will process, ideally adopt its own process. With, but with the dissolution of the committee, the process doesn't continue. So I'm kind of concerned that there's that assumption. Which is why I said it's my sincere hope right. that every committee will. And perhaps they won't, and that is their right to not. But I, my hope and, is that. And I agree totally with everything you're saying. I purpose here is to just ensure the consultation that's all so if I could you so would we also add that to the CRC charge in consultation with planning board and ZBA okay I hear you okay uh, I, Alyssa and so thank you for pulling all those pieces together and I appreciate you putting a very fine point on that because I will vote against every recommendation you bring to this council if you don't follow the process we've already set up with some rationale for why you're changing right. something because we've all worked on this a really long time and so you want to tweak something sure but you better have a rationale for having done it and Finance Committee, it's true, we haven't had to do it again, and we're not going to be allowed to. So if one of your Finance Committee members that's a non-voting member resigns, good luck with that, because nobody's job to do it. Um, but when you do it, you know, you might do it the way we just most recently did Planning Board, and then we're about to do ZBA. You might do it the way we did for Finance Committee. But that part about consultation, we have to assume that the council thought was a good idea, and unless we're going to add it to all the others, I don't see why we need to add it just for Finance Committee. I will say that I don't think Finance Committee really belongs here in GOL, actually. It's just there's no place else to put it. Honestly, I, I don't think it's really the right spot for it, but given that there's sentiment that people are unwilling to let Finance Committee choose their own members, right, which would be a way somebody could do it, um, you got to stick it somewhere, and it doesn't fit any better any place else, which is why it was convenient to have an appointments committee. But um, you're right that that process is not a town council process, so we just have to trust that that's going to continue. Okay. Um, so the motion's been made, seconded, and the amendment to this has been also agreed to among the parties that made the motion. Is there any further discussion? What we are voting on is the statement in consultation with the council members of the finance committee. Kathy. I want to say one thing for the record. There, there was a proposal to let finance select, and there was some sentiment for that, and different committees voted different ways on it. So th this wasn't not thought of earlier on. Is there a further discussion on this item? Andy. Yeah, just one sentence. Uh, it is different from the Planning Board and the Zoning Board of Appeals because this is a standing committee of the council. Okay. Any further discussion? Shalini? So I do appreciate the OCA process, and I'm sure we're going to follow that. Um, but like Lynn pointed out, I would agree that processes might change we might come up with something better in the future and this is a charge and so i think it, this is something we i mean finance committee like think we would but i'm not in finance committee anymore but i think that we by putting it in the charge for the committee it just makes that part a part of even if the processes change this is very clear that this consultation will take place so i would like to keep it the way andy this, this statement is not in relationship to this, but I also want to recognize the fact that I also consulted with Evan about the process of appointments and vacancies 
when I was putting together the lengthy set of things. So, in respect of the Oka process. Thank you. The motion on the floor is to add in, in consultation with the council members of the Finance Committee. Is there any further discussion? Okay, then I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of adding in consultation with the council members of the Finance Committee, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the motion, and abstain? No, it's six to, s six to seven. Thank you, the motion fails. Now we are back to the original motion, okay? And the motion is very lengthy and basically involves adopting these various committee charges that for GOL, OCA, and CR, no, GOL, TSO, and CRC, and dissolving OCA, and OCA will continue to exist, but only for the purposes of the zoning and planning board appointments until the end of June. Okay, is that the summary? Yes, Alyssa. And to clarify, we are talking about, because I remember what the report said, and I'm a little worried about what the motion says, but I'm sure Mandy Jo will reassure me, which is that we are also planning to deal with planning board and zoning board appointments that expire June 30th. That's so correct. So that they're done before the next body has to take them on. That is right? correct. Okay, good, just that being clear correct. on that. Whereas for finance committee, we will not be doing that and that will immediately shift over to GOL so that if any vacancies occur in those bodies or that when the um, reappointment time comes up, that will be right. in GOL. Okay. Moving forward. Challenging. So I'm, uh, I really appreciate the work that GOL has done in breaking up these three and formulating these three committees the way they are. And for three specific reasons, I support that. One is that um, CRC will have the time to look at the important issues, including economic development, which has not been looked at at all. Uh, secondly, um, the, the like George pointed out that there are a lot of residents who bring up issues related to processes and ser services, and uh, the the what is it? The T TSO committee can then look at now take out time to investigate and look at some of these processes and transparency in town pertaining to the services. So I'm happy that there will be time for that. And then thirdly, in terms of we've I know we haven't yet uh, been successful in getting more engagement of UMass students maybe or other com community members and and now it seems like again the TSO committee will have that charge and maybe the time to look at ways and connect with different community members so I am in favor are there of any other comments Sarah I feel like I have worked really hard to listen to what people had to say around how we're restructuring things and how it would lessen the load. I talked to people about how these things were being restructured. Um, I'm not going to, I was going to vote for this because I, I believe what George said is that we all have to pull for the common good and get this done and over with. I believe that the rest of the council will do that. When the president of this council quickly says that OCA process was just the OCA process and it is not ratified by the council, what that says to me is, no, and it's fine, it's fine. I am gonna say what I have to say and I'm gonna leave it here. I will not hold a grudge, I will not, and I've said that before. But what I am hearing is 
that when people said, restructuring of this has nothing to do with what OCA has done in the past and we respect you very much, I don't believe that's true. I believe that part of this was to take away the responsibility from a group of people that it felt like we were difficult and that people thought that they could do that process better. And I'm willing to you know, say, great, maybe TSO is gonna be fantastic, but we cannot control. If somebody's pothole doesn't get filled, there's only so much we can do. I still feel very much like that is a committee that was formed to maybe absorb <laughs> other people and really all it is going to end up doing is maybe some communications and outreach, which I don't really think exist, but we could make them. And that it's gonna have a place where when residents are upset about something, they can go to a committee and they can express their frustration, but that committee really can do nothing except to make them feel heard. And I just have to say that, I have to let it be known that that is how I feel. But I will drop it here. I will drop it here, but that's how I feel. Are there other comments? Pat. Um, I, I am concerned about, and I've, I've shared this in our meeting, so it's not new, um, this drop-in for every resident. Um, I have, while I have great respect for the issues that residents bring forward, I also know that there are times when a resident doesn't get what they think they should get that they become extremely difficult for staff and other people. And I don't think that, uh, and I'm concerned that that's a potential for this committee, that it will be the committee that people holler at, that people, um, that people put out their frustration on potholes, forgetting that we get potholes every win winter because of expansion and contraction. Uh, you know, and I, I am concerned about that. I think Sarah is bringing up an important issue there. Are there other comments at this time? Darcy. Uh, I agree with a lot of what Sarah said. And I just want to mention the fact that um, it seems like a lot of the reason for doing this restructuring is to increase our efficiency. And um, if, if each one of these three committees that now has appointments, responsibilities, and some, to some extent outreach and communication, if they then need to uh, form subcommittees, then we will actually, you know, that will add work. That will add more committee meetings that need to be posted and have, need minutes and blah, blah, blah. Um, so I, you know, if this is the way we are going, that's the way it is, but I hope that it actually doesn't complicate matters, you know, to, to be giving CRC the responsibility for planning board and ZBA, that's a big responsibility. We, this morning at OCA, we talked about Evan counting up the hours that he has put into um, all of the organizing around having interviews and so on. That's a big job. So we're taking stuff, we're taking responsibility away from CRC and giving them the appointments responsibility. Uh, which is not a small thing. Um, so I'm just saying that it does really feel to me also like a lot of this was about dissolving OCA. Are there other comments at this time? Dorothy. Well, we, we spent a lot of time in the very beginning, for, I guess for the first year, figuring out what to do and how to do it. And OCA had a huge load of work to do because we had a lot of vacancies. And I think we're just beginning to come to the end of the batch of vacancies. Uh, I have been very happy and satisfied with all of the people who have been appointed. Um, I think that they show care and thoughtfulness and concern on the part of the committee. 
I, I guess I saw Oka getting some of the flack that CRC was getting, that we were taking too long to do things, but as you know, it's very difficult to do things. So um, I had no idea that some people in Oka felt that this was a move to um, do away with their committee. I thought it was a move to spread, um, it's, it's in some of the papers, that a lot of people felt, oh gee, CRC has all the interesting, meaty stuff, and more people on the council wanted to be involved in that kind of thing, which is one of the reasons why the TSO committee was su suggested. So I, I just don't want you to feel, Sarah, that nobody knew, respected and, and was aware of the work of the committee because we were, and we were admiring it, and I think you've got a great bunch of appointments. I haven't heard a single word of criticism about any of them. Are there other comments at this time? Okay, then I'm going to call a question. <laughs> at this point, the question is the full set of changes. That's a really good statement, Pat. Um, okay, it's to accept the new charge for CRC, the new charge for GOL. It's to add TSO with its charge and all the various amendments. And then it is to have OCA continue with its excellent process, and I do mean that, um, that in, have OCA continue with that for the purposes of appointing ZBA and planning board and reappointments through the end of June. That's, in essence, where we are. Now, would you like the motion read in its full wording? No. no? Okay. All right. All those in favor of this committee restructuring, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. So nine to four to zero. And with that, I will begin polling in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, we're moving on to um, the next item on the agenda, which is the statement of project eligibility. Um, there was a request at the last meeting that we develop a letter that would go in the packet of statements with regard to project eligibility for 132 Northampton Road. Uh, again, in consultation, I developed this letter and it's your opportunity to tear it apart. George. I don't want to tear it apart. Actually, I'm grateful that you took this on, Lynn, and I think also, I think Alyssa had a hand in this, and maybe there were others, but I think it was important to do, and I appreciate the fact that you did it. Um, I have a suggested amendment that I have uh, shown to Lynn, and I've given to a few of you, I'll give to all of you in a moment, related to just the last paragraph. Um, I would. My thought is, let me just speak to the thought before, um, uh, is that I think we should be very clear. I feel that this council has been clear in its support of this project. Um, and I would like that to be clear in the, the letter. And I, I sort of just, should it be at the beginning or at the end? And it seemed more appropriate at the end um, to, to express that. So I've just made, or I'm gonna propose a couple of small changes, but the essence of it is, is and again, you may not agree, this is something that that you will decide, but I think that we should express what I, I say our strong support for the proposed single occupancy supportive housing at 132 Northampton Road. So that's the essence of my um, amendment. And I can uh, share the copies with people. At, uh, Lynn has one, but I can give it to the rest of you, but I'll let the, the, the uh, president decide how she wants to proceed. But um, I appreciate very much that you did this, and um, my suggestion is to just make it a bit stronger uh, I hope that you'll agree. So 
the way that George has worded this last paragraph is to say, consistent with the previous actions of various governing and advisory board bodies of the town of Amherst, the town council, striking the word through its own actions, continues to, to strike that and say, express in strong support for, expresses its strong support for the proposed single room occupancy SRO, supportive housing at 132 Northampton Road, Amherst, Mass, submitted by Valley Community Development Corporation, Valley CDC. We continue to encourage residents to share their views during the DHCD review period, as well as at future Zoning Board of Appeals hearings. Is there a second to that change? Dorothy? I second it. Any further discussion? Does the clerk need a copy? Because I have a, if you have one, thank you. Any further discussion on that? So that's a motion to adjust this and then we'll, we never, we never did a motion for the whole letter. All right. Ah, thank you. All right, first I have a motion to suspend the rules, which is suspend rule, suspend rule 8.4, which allows us to act on this without bringing back to a second council meeting. So, and the reason to do that is because the packet needs to be filed uh, in the next week or so, okay? Is there a motion to suspend rule 8.4 for so this moved. item? Second. Second. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, now is there a motion to um, have this letter go forward as presented? As amended. as amended. I'm sorry, as amended. Is there a motion? Is there a second? Thank you. Any further discussion? Mandy Jo. So, um, I'm gonna abstain, which I don't do very often, um, because I don't wanna vote no, because I actually support this project. But for the last five or six months or more, we have been telling the neighborhood and the residents in the neighborhood and anyone else that came to us seeking comment or seeking us to do anything or seeking us to to review changes and seeking help from us, that we had no further action to take on this matter. And this letter takes further action. It uses the power of the office, the power of the town council, to submit a comment in support of this to the DHCD. And while I support the project, I think it's wrong for us to tell our constituents that we will not be further involving ourselves in this project and then go ahead and further involve ourselves in the project. So for that reason, I will be abstaining. Yeah. Alyssa? So I, I will take some blame for that because I certainly tried to delineate that when we had various public processes, but perhaps I was forgetting because of when the select board did it, it is a different way as the executive um, with the Beacon Communities North Amherst project. It was obvious to me that we would write something associated with the Pell letter and it is also obvious to me that we will take a position as a board and we will submit it to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So that would also fly in the face of what you are saying. So I, I appreciate that sentiment, but I still, and I don't wanna seem like I'm splitting hairs, and I'm sure some people will argue that I am, but it's true, we can't take any further action to compel any action as a town council. We could, we could vote for the funding, and that was really the only thing we had a choice about at that point but I never believed that we wouldn't continue to advocate for the project because we do believe in the project, and I never believed that we might not, or we might choose not to, have something to say to the ZBA about it, depending on what various things are brought up in everybody's comments that we might feel like we can take a position to say, yep, that's right, ZBA, I hope you'll take that into account, or nope, we're not touching that. But I still feel like this is not the same thing as a town council action. Evan. Oh, I'm sorry, Kathy. I, I, I just wanna build yeah. on, when we supported 
taking $500,000 in support of them going for a project that was going to leverage state money. We were, in effect, saying we support it at the state level. That's all this letter is saying. This is the next step. If they can't get through this, it doesn't happen. You know, so we, we voted when we voted on that money a much larger state project. Um, so I think this goes with it. And it's maybe we didn't word the earlier statements perfectly, but um, to not support them getting the state money would basically be to return that money to us <laughs> because it won't happen without the state money. So this was part of that earlier vote. Any further conversation? Uh, Dorothy. Oh, I have a question. I mean, right now they have a proposal that they're sending into the state. I believe that they can change things, that the state can change things, that things happen in, in the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, if we send a letter of support, we are supporting the proposal that is going to the state. We're not necessarily supporting any changes that Valley CDC might make or that the ZBA might make. Is that not correct? That's correct. All right. So I could see me not supporting it if certain things changed. Uh, if, for example, the level of support which they increased um, in response to uh, comments from uh, a variety of people, if they changed that, uh, I could see not supporting it. At the moment, I support the proposal as it is written. Um, but that's all that we would be supporting in this letter. Okay. Any further comment? Evan? I just wanted to say really quickly that while I respectfully disagree with what you said, I really appreciate you taking the time to explain your abstention. Okay. Thank you. Any further comment? Okay. So the motion is to adopt or to approve the council's statement of project eligibility as presented. Amended. As amended, I'm sorry, as amended. And it's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. OK, thank you. Uh, we are moving on to pro the proposed wage theft bylaw. And I have been told to call on people in the following order, Kathy, Mandy, and Pat. Kathy. <laughs> Kathy, Mandy, and Pat have promised to be delightfully brief on this. <laughs> um, you, you, ha you have a cover memo from us. Um, and what we're bringing before you, and it's a team of three that has worked on this, but we worked on this with a lot of help from people who are advocates of this and have worked with other towns. And we're hoping that we'll have a fuller uh, dis t discussion with evidence of why this is needed. So what the three bylaws that we've drafted and you have before you would basically do is um, add to the fact that there's a state wage and hours law that's often broken and it would allow the town to be stronger in its ability to enforce because it knew there was a violation and have some tools to enforce that enforcement. And th this is under a general collection of things called wage theft. And there are a series of examples that we put in the cover memo, but where people are working and they're not being paid minimum wage, they're not being paid time and a half for overtime, they're paid cash, so they never pay payroll taxes, they don't get full credit. They're not paid tips, they were earned. Um, I know of personal stories of people working for restaurants or service things where there was an accident on shift and they were discouraged from filing a workers' comp claim and they understood their job was potentially at risk. So what I want to turn this now over is to my two co-authors to talk about the three bylaws. So all of these would, these are not legal practices, but they happen. So what we're proposing, which would help to strengthen our ability to prevent these practices. Okay. We are not voting on this bylaw. In fact, if we vote at all, it is to refer. Um, Mandy. Okay. So I'm going to talk about the first two. The first one is a responsible employer bylaw. It 
our proposal is to essentially rescind the one that is currently in the bylaws um, and replace it with this one. And its purpose is basically to ensure that when the town awards contracts for public construction and all, we award it only to people who follow the law and only to um, contractors who follow the law, certify they're following the law and have, and have no history in the last certain number of years of not following the law. The tax relief one, which is the second one, um, is a similar one, but instead of when we're awarding contracts for construction, it's when we're granting tax relief to people who are constructing stuff in town, we only grant that tax relief to those who follow the law and have no history in the last part, certain number of years of not following the law. Those are those two. Okay. Pat. And the third one has to do with service industry, particularly restaurant workers and salon workers who are dependent on tips. Um, we are again saying um, that there will be fines and uh, possible license loss if uh, people aren't paid correctly. And I, I wanted to bring out a, a couple of really short facts. 82 employ in 2017, 82 employers in the restaurant industry received 136 citations for wage theft and, uh, and had to pay in nearly $1,350,000 in fines and restitution. Uh, restaurant workers and salon workers are pretty are really susceptible to wage theft because particularly restaurant workers their wage is usually about two dollars and something an hour and then their tips bring them up to minimum wage which is 725 for restaurant workers uh, that hasn't been increased since 1991 and What's interesting here is what makes it so easy for them to lose their tips is that they're being, they're, they're being up to that 725, which the employer, it looks legit, but they haven't given or returned all of the tips that the uh, employee has returned. So that complica complication makes it harder, and I'm taking up too much time. <laughs> okay. Are there questions? Again, this is a referral. It's not to vote on. Um, Pat. I move for that we refer the three wage uh, theft bylaws to the GOL. Yeah. It's automatic. GOL's automatic. It's whether the council would want to also refer to, well, now we just created TSO, so TSO. Okay. Could, um, the wish of the council? It's an automatic referral to GOL. The question is, does it also go to TSO? Yes. yes, it should, because it will involve the license commission, um, the board of license commissioners. Pardon me? Oh, do that for me. Okay, Mandy Joe, you're supposed to now make the motion. I moved her for the wage theft bylaw you know, proposal, all three of them, to the, no, to the Town Services and Outreach Committee with a report back to the Town Council on um, March, no, April 10th. No yet, so. Yeah, there's no committee yet, is there? Our meeting. April 30th. <laughs> April 30th. Second. Okay. All right. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? It's also an automatic referral to GOL. Thank you. Okay, all those in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. Okay. Um, we are through the action items. Um, we've done appointments. And we're up to committee reports. CRC, do you have anything else to add tonight? Um, we are working on a comprehensive housing policy. We'll start discussing a process for draft and something like that this coming Wednesday. We're also working on a process for how zoning bylaws work their way through the system, as it were. 
um, when they're at the planning board stage where the planning board's ready to act, how we're gonna do joint hearings, what it's gonna look like and all of that. And so we're discussing that this Wednesday too. Okay. Um, Finance committee, Andy. Nothing really additional. We'll, we'll see some of you maybe tomorrow when we meet with uh, the auditor. Okay. Uh, GOL? Nothing further. Uh, OCA? OCA is currently looking at our community activity forms and ways that we could potentially make them more useful. So if you have ideas on that, you can feel free to send it to the chair of OCA. I think this still fits within our current charge of regarding appointments. Um, and then the second thing is you will potentially see some movement on filling ZBA vacancies in the next month, fingers crossed. Percent for art. The percent for art ad hoc committee has submitted a final full report um, and a revised bylaw, and it's currently being reviewed by GOL. Um, there's also a finance committee report that was done that accompanies the revised bylaw, and I think we're talking about uh, on the next council meeting that the that we would bring that before the full council. At least that it was the last time I heard timing from the president, but I don't know whether GOL will finish whatever its review is going to be. GOL needs to wait on legal review. Okay, so has it been sent out for a legal review? Well, I've reached out to the town manager and uh, we'll see where it goes okay. at the moment. I don't know. Thank you. Okay, so it, it, unless we don't have the legal review back, um, at this point, we're planning on March 9th, but we'll see, okay? And once then GOL, the review has to go back to GOL and then so forth. Um, the, uh, we also will be adding to this the JCPC for the future um, because it involves obviously members of the council, okay? Um, Town Manager's report, Mr. Bachelman. Thank you. First, shout out to the students who have made it through the, some pretty <laughs> nuanced conversations. Thank you. A um, few things. Um, I know you we're late on this. Um, early voting started this morning, precisely at 8 a.m. Uh, anybody can vote. Uh, if you live in the town of Amherst or are, are registered to vote in the town of Amherst, you can come into town hall from 8 to 4.30 any day this week. And Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, if you are, you can, anybody can go to uh, Bartlett Hall at the University of Massachusetts from 4 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. to vote. And so those are two opportunities for early voting. We encourage you to take advantage of it. It's very fast and convenient, um, and there is really no excuse to not vote in the presidential primary if you so choose in one of the, as a member of one of the four parties. Um, Second is um, the events that are where uh, uh, events that are scheduled or we anticipate will happen on March 7th, um, formerly known as uh, an event. <laughs> and, uh, and we are um, uh, prepared for that and the, our, the public safety from the town and with the university have worked very well together and pretty much following the same routine that we have in the past. Um, census, it's really all hands on deck. Uh, we have multiple players all working to make sure that we, the town of Amherst, as the ninth hardest to count community, are going to make sure that everybody who is a resident of Amherst gets counted. Um, we have uh, great leadership from our state representative, Mindy Dom. Uh, we have a complete count group that includes our town clerk and um, clerk to the council and uh, communications manager working on the town. Our senior center director is working very hard on it. So a um, lot of efforts in, in uh, different ways to make sure that everybody gets counted for the census. It's very important for the town and for the state. Um, the also want to point out that uh, we have excellent work from our public safety and health department 
uh, in cooperation with our institutions of higher education and Cooley Dickinson on the coronavirus. Uh, a high level of communication among uh, all the different groups and uh, all the proper precautions are being taken when uh, there's a, a possibility of someone having the coronavirus because we are an international community and people travel a lot because of the universities and the college, the university and the colleges. Um, but people are on top of it. Just want to make sure everybody understands that um, the coronavirus is one thing. The regular flu, influenza, is another thing that's really knocking people out. And so uh, please take care to wash your hands, etc. <laughs> Thank you for the timely <laughs> cough. <laughs> um, and lastly, I just want to make sure we are, we're, we're very big and we're working very hard on the budget, uh, both the capital and the operating budget in preparation for our delivery to the council in a timely manner. Thank you. Um, any questions for the town manager regarding his report, comments? All right, then moving on to town council comments, let me just uh, state, as I have said earlier, I will be polling for both the um, new committees and the newly charged committees, uh, and I will also be polling for liaisons. The committee appointments are ones that um, I may have to come and talk to each of you based on how many people want to be on which committees, um, but also, um, on the liaisons, it's a recommendation to the council for you to act on. I will bring that forward for our next meeting on the 9th. Huh? No, if preferred. <laughs> um, we do, on our next agenda item, uh, March 9th, we do have the hearing on Lincoln Avenue at 6.30. And um, if a, it is prepared, prepared I'm sorry. Uh, you said the hearing was at 6.30. Isn't the hearing at 6 on? Athena, no, it's been posted at 6.30. Uh, Thank you. I would have moved it forward, but we said it would be 6.30, so we're going to leave it there. Um, and percent per, for our bylaw if it is uh, ready for voting. Any other comments from counselors? Yes. Are we thinking of starting that meeting early and then just going to the hearing at 6.30? I was waiting to see what the agenda would look like, which okay. I will know by the end of this Friday um, when we meet to work on the agenda. Uh, if it's a lengthy agenda, then I'm going to suggest that we actually meet early and then just start the hearing at 6.30. <laughs> Alyssa. I just want to put in a plug for considering starting early because a hearing might normally have started early. And I don't, I think I would have predicted a two hour discussion tonight, but I don't think everybody did or they wouldn't have thought we were leaving at 10 o'clock tonight. Um, two hours on our committee reorganization. So just depending on what's coming up, I think if we all can make six, I would love to get some stuff done before the hearing. Okay, thank you. Any further uh, count, counselor comments at this time? Any topics not reasonably anticipated? Is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, raise your hand and say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <laughs> I'm being funny.